to the Metropol Grid. How's everyone doing? It is Thursday the 12th, so it's in the bottom corner. I didn't prepare. How's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully you're having a good Thursday. Maybe it's Friday. Maybe you're watching this on a VOD at some point later. It's a cool way to consume content, I suppose. How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome. How's it going, Twitch chat? Yo, Jessica, hello. Got my first ever tournament on Monday. So terrified. I mean, excited. That's super cool. Hey, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think one of the things that I most recommend to uh, everyone who plays Netrunner is one of the best things you can do is go play out in a public space. Uh, a big part of Netrunner, obviously, is like face down cards, uh, people using creative expression, building decks, and you only see so much of that if you have like a small, maybe like a tabletop meta or your friends or whatever. And it's, I can only talk about my community or those that I've had a, the chance to step foot in. People are fucking fantastic. It is the most fun and you just gotta share your excitement about things with other people that care about the same things. That's probably why you're here too, I imagine. So it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be really cool. Let me know how it goes, by the way. That's really cool. Is it GMK, I take it? Also, what's up chat? Baza, good luck, you have a blast. That's to Jessica. Hey, how's it going, Baza? Cutthroat Finch, good luck, have fun. Yo, people, this is the sort of support you expect and you haven't even gone anywhere. How's everyone doing? Yo, USB, what's up? Maddie, favorite guy, hey, how's it going? Hey Rob also, how's it going? It's been a bit. And Mark andre how you doing over there on the YouTube land? It is, I, I think we've said this a couple weeks in a row, maybe just two. It's, it's a big week for Netrunner. We got a new Most Wanted list coming out. This came out this Monday, which let me tell you, this deck list of the week, now illegal. Is illegal, what do we do about it, chat? Functor points, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the chat, how's, how you doing? Also David Hoffman over in the YouTube, what's up? How's everyone going? Hopefully you're doing good. This is a problem that happens when we have a new most wanted list. This deck list is now not tournament legal. I don't know if it's Chinteki.net legal. I'd assume it might be actually. But we have Film Critic and now Angolo, which lo and behold is a restricted card. So I don't know what we want to do here. We could just change this with a code gate breaker. The deck is probably not that great without it, but uh, this is a pretty good shell for a Haley deck list. Uh, talking about Haley, we're probably going to be playing some Haley today. Uh, unfortunately, Jessica said we get a skip a Haley deck. Woo. Um, yeah, we're going to be coming back real fast to that, I am, unfortunately. Yo, chat, what do we want to do about this? It seems like more like a cut critic situation. I think you're right. We probably can cut critic. It's just kind of like a tech card. And then we only have 44 cards, so we can pull one card in and call it a day. Um, for what it's worth, we have misdirection. I'm not sure why we need no one home. I probably just want to do a third pad tap because money life is good life. Uh, and that's probably it. We'll go from there. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, Blue Muse, how's it going as well? Happy Thursday. How you doing? Also, what's up, Billy? How's it going? Well, not Billy, Andrew Hicks. Dang, the new Most Wanted list came out. It came out on Monday. Uh, it's only like four cards worth of change, but it's kind of pretty exciting. On top of that, we've had the new cards that came out last week. We actually had a GNK just this, uh, last night. We had a GK here in Montreal with both the new cards and the new Most Wanted list. We had eight players. It was pretty great. Three rounds. It was a good time out at the Randolph Pub. Uh, we're going to be playing the decks that I played there yesterday. Uh, I went technically, uh, only lost one game. For what it's worth, lost two games. Um, unfortunately, one of my opponents, after they were cleaning up, excuse me, they were showing me what ice they installed, and they actually installed an agenda. And they're like, oh, fuck, you win that one, uh, which is pretty funny. Um, I've actually done that once before. Uh, it kind of sucks. So anyways, I got that win. Uh, but yeah, we got some good stuff. Uh, I guess we're just going to try this Haley deck really quick. quick. Put in Whistleblower, lol. <laughs> How's it going? You know what, Phil? We might want to try in Whistleblower just to see how bad it is. Or how good it is accurately. That's a better attitude. We'll do this. My friend went to Montreal this weekend, loved it so much. Why would anyone bother going to Paris? Where's your friend coming from, Andrew? That's a big thing. It's like Montreal, as far as my experience in North America, is probably one of the most like European-esque cities in terms of like vibe and everything like that. And I kind of love it for that reason. Uh, it's also fantastic in the summer. This is a bit late to summer. It was kind of cold this weekend, wasn't it? I'm not complaining. Look so Hey, Andre, nice haircut. Thank you. How's it going? Um, I finally did get that haircut we wanted. Um, so I'm feeling okay about it. Let's put this together. What is this called, actually? Pilot season. Sweet. Oh, man. So we're going to be playing a bit of Shaper, which, again, I think is the my weakest faction, barring Apex, probably. Uh, I honestly think Sunny's probably pretty good right now. Maybe we need to look into that. Uh, so do bear with me to some extent. So again, this should be now a restricted card if you're just tuning in. The new most wanted list did hit um, on 
that's better for my ego. Uh, uh, just hit on Monday. So this is now a restricted card. So we're just gonna cut two copies of Film Critic. Uh, another really important thing about Haley is you wanna also make sure that you have a lot of, like, because you're doing double installs, it's good to have like maybe more than six hardware if you can, just so the chance of double installing hardware gets a bit higher. So losing resources kind of hurts a bit. Um, I like pad tab over no one home. I know we shouldn't be changing the deck list of the week, but we've already done it, huh? And we have one card to put in here. Uh, what was our idea? We had an idea, right? We had an idea. I felt like we felt strongly about something a minute ago. I don't know what it was. Jester says skip it. Fuck. Play cast? Yeah, we can play daily cast. Daily cast is fine. Oh no, we were gonna play whistleblower. Isn't that card influence though? This must be influence. Oh, that's why it's never happening. I found it out, guys. That might be part of the reason. Gainesville, Florida. Rock City. Been to Europe a bunch of times and just said for the cash, save, <laughs> save it on flight cost. Montreal was just as cool as Europe for way cheaper. Not far off. Not too far off. And that's pretty approachable. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Yeah, whistleblower. We tried for a second there. We glimpsed into the void. We said no. It's important that we can make those decisions. DND, how's it going? Whistleblower is way better than it seems. It's nothing compared to Film Critic, but it can do work. I believe it. And I, I think it also capitalizes on the sort of decks that you know what they are. Uh, on JNet, it might be a bit more crazy. We play against a lot of wilder stuff. I would be more likely to play Whistleblower in a deck that also ran Exposed. Like uh, in a criminal, it's actually pretty easy to run Whistleblower alongside Falsified Credentials. I think that makes it a bit more appealing. Here we got to do a bit more hard reads, which, you know, kind of sounds rough. Hey, Phil, how's it going? Got to harass you to coming to Nats. Oof. Seems unlikely at this point. Um, more likely, actually, if you didn't know, uh, at PAX, I forget what, I think it's like PAX, I don't know which PAX it is, but it's in the beginning of December. They're doing a Northeast Championship at PAX. It's like $35, I think, if you only go for the day. It's in Philly, which is kind of approachable from here. It's a lot closer than, than Edmonton, unfortunately. Uh, apathy ah uh, how's it? it's going good we're just starting the stream uh we're gonna try and figure out some some uh find an opponent uh we're playing with the new most wanted list i don't know if it's standardized across i don't think it was standardized across jnet so we might be playing against people who are playing the old most wanted list i'm not gonna like say the room is for 3.2 largely it's it's bigger a deal if you're playing corp the most wanted list hit runners a lot more than corp so that matters boosh is running a pax one. Oh fuck yeah pax unplug thank you Jessica, will you be going to Worlds? Uh, looks like no. Um, it's pretty soon, actually. It's in a couple weeks. Uh, but it is pretty far away and pretty expensive. I heard, actually, Code Marvelous is now going, which is probably pretty exciting for, for content. I might be... Am I wrong about that? I think Dan said on Facebook he's going now. If you put down Whistleblower against P, the panic is great. <laughs> yeah, but that's so hard, right? Like, you're now blank running things. And you have to use it before you access Oh, my God, that card is so hard. Maybe stick to a film critic exchange in Golo for a Gordian Blade. That's something we thought about, Klikots. Uh, and Golo's probably just way better than film critic. It depends on the meta. But um, Golo's still really good and probably worth a restricted slot for sure. Hey, John, how's it going? It's going well. Yourself. Padraig, how's it going? Good timing. I've been digging your content, but haven't seen haven't seen a live stream as a new player. You're super awesome. That's super cool, Padraig. Thanks so much for the kind words. I'm glad. Oh, beans. Um, I'm glad it, the content has been finding you well. Um, I hope I say this enough on the stream. I try to describe what I'm doing when I'm playing. Um, but as much as possible, if you're specifically a new player, don't feel, I don't know what word, apprehensive about asking questions about the game, about play against, even if it's not about what's going on on the screen here. Be like, yo, what's up? What do you think about this? How should I do this? What's good strats for this? Please do it. Not only can I answer, you got all these people here that give a shit about the same thing. This hand's keepable. We got the Proco early. We'd all want to open it with another like zero cost resource, like Technical Writer, just so we can get the double install. Mind you, Haley gets a double install turn against Apollina. Uh, yeah, we can do worse than this. Uh, film, oh man, this deck really struggles against, I would actually maybe not consider Daily Cast because this deck does struggles pretty hard against um, Current. Celebrity Gift, Anansi, Eli, Excalibur, and Geofront Surveyor. Okay, so seems like Glacier, not a lot of traps, could be still Snare in this deck. I think we can just set up. The question is with the way we draw once for Proco value. I think we might, but probably better we get our double install here with these two and then Proco draw twice. So we'll do that. Double install programs first. Yeah, I think that's right. So this is our Kaylee. So we get two programs down and now we can smash the Proco and we can Proco up. You want to burst draw a lot of times. You don't want to draw once a turn against uh, Polina. Luckily with Proco, a lot of times we do Proco three times uh, just because I get a credit. You don't want to draw once. 
Bedridden with sciatica. Thanks for the distraction. Oh, I don't even actually know what sciatica is. It sounds poorly. Hopefully you're doing okay. What corp did you play your GNK? Blue Sun. Blue Sun's good. Man, Blue Sun's good. There's no more lamb spoilers, so Blue Sun is really strong. And I think shapers are now less likely to play film critic uh, because Angolo is a thing. So like you can punitive people pretty easily. Or a lot easier. It's also like the new yellow cards are really good punitive. So do we know what the server is? We know that it's probably NGO front with Eli, Anansi, Anansi or Eli or Surveyor or Excalibur. I don't know. This is probably an Anansi. I think we're just going to draw through. Playing a card to prevent damage from stealing a PH once, <laughs> maybe. That's Padrig. But it's cool. Weird name is weird. Hey, cool. You're really good at explaining your thought process. It's been super helpful in learning the game and standard as well. Hey, super glad to hear. All right, we're just going to proco up a bit. Uh, if we draw once, we have this really shitty double install, but our MU is kind of tight. So I don't know if we're going to do that. Uh, I think we're going to draw up once and hopefully we get another thing to install with the pad tap. And then worst case, we can throw out the Parisia. We're actually not a pawn shop deck, so we don't get that much value from it. Um, OK, so now we can install two programs. Uh, we don't have pawn shop, but we have spec work. So getting down the Parisia is not the worst. Oh, actually, no, we have MU issues. Uh, beans. This is two. Uh, we could pop this to install a card from hand, uh, clicklessly. I don't know what we want early because we have Angolo down. Sorry, I didn't look at the deck list enough. We don't have David in this deck list either, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, David's really good against this sort of ice. So we need our Angolo. We have Ika though, so we need our Angolo to deal with uh, Surveyor a lot of the times. So we can't admin Surveyor elegantly. It's really difficult. Um, oh, geez. Okay. Uh, I think we could pop this. We have Angolo, which is good enough. What do we want to pull? That's a problem. This might not be the best pull here. Actually, this is a pretty expensive pull. Uh, Angolo is 2MU. I think we just want to do the Leprechaun and then install from our grip. Yeah, we can get this down. Uh, we don't really need to host it. And then we can just play, I guess, for gamble, whatever. Not the best turn. Pets, how's it going? Leprechaun? Yeah, I think that's right. Pet tap triggers off ID abilities. What a sweet card. Hell yeah, it does. When you install this, especially against Asmar and you get money, it's so good. Project Yagi Udo. Okay, this might not actually be a more jammy deck. This is probably not having Niseis, which they might actually because they have Excalibur. So we maybe wanted to check there just so they spend money. So getting our money up seems really important. Uh, we could play Pad Tab first to get credits when they get a credit when we draw, but I think we're just going to try and get some more value. Oh, Jesus. Have I been clicking to draw this whole time? I haven't been clicking Proco. Oh, thank God I've been clicking Proco. I'd be really embarrassed. Uh, okay, so we have this double install, which is pretty good. We're at seven. Uh, we can throw out the misdirection. It really doesn't matter in this matchup. And I think uh, Beth will probably do a bit more. We want the card draw. Actually, this is probably fine too. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do the Beth. Because they might trash one of these and then next turn we can put down two. If we play two of them, they probably don't trash them. And I actually kind of like the idea of them trying to trash them. But I think they're a much faster jammy deck that that won't happen. We'll see. I had a lamb surfer deck chew up endless Eulas at regionals this week. I won't miss lamb. I think very few people will miss lamb. I'll be honest. The idea they can't throw avocados in the bin freely. That's true. In the bin, it's really easy. That's one of the best targets for that is in the bin. Uh, they're playing a scarcity. Okay, so we got that through and they did trash a pad tap, which is pretty good. So I think largely we can just install our Angolo and kind of charge this remote. We do have a stim hack too. Um, Atman's kind of good. Uh, I, I want them to spend money just because Anansi they can't res, so it's probably Surveyor, which honestly isn't that bad. With seven credits, there's not that much they can punish us with. I think we actually run without installing any programs. Uh, Cortex Lock is fine. We take one damage. Yeah, we'll do it. I think we'll just run here. Just make them spend some money. If we draw first, they get eight credits so they can res Anansi. That would be a mistake, so we're not going to do that. Admin 5 is okay. We don't have Data Sucker support. Okay, this is fine. We can trace through this. This is cheaper than doing anything else. It's still a lot of money, though. We could let the end of the run fire, honestly. I don't know what this could be. It might actually just be an agenda. We don't want the tags for sure. Oh, we actually do have Misdirection. Uh, misdirection was... Uh, the Precia is actually probably a bit better. Even getting the Precia down here is not right, but Precia is only assets. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of bad. You let's play Lego again. Yeah, it's a lot better. A lot of stuff got better. Ooh, that's a Philotic. Feels good. Clear the current, super importantly. Uh, we still haven't installed, so we're going to do Proco, Proco, and then we have this double install, which we can get down. We'll get some money next time we drop. This is pretty good. Yo, Wayne, how's it going? Hello. They're jamming again. Install advance. 
advance. Uh, it's an NGO front. They're just resing it already. So they want to pop it as soon as we draw so that we don't get double value from pad tap. It's, it's, it's like a weird play. Like we don't really have to run this one on one credit. For what it's worth, I would love to get down. Oh, I guess they can pop this already. But like getting down a Stargate here is really good because then it can lock the game out. Uh, I know they have, they can get the nine credits to res this Anansi. This is probably Excalibur into Surveyor. I don't know what this could be. This also could be Eli. This is either Eli or uh, Excalibur or Anansi, right? Uh, we'll keep drawing. All right. Um, cash down. <laughs> I didn't say good luck, have fun. So good luck, have fun. Yeah. Um, we can play these down just to get technical writer credits. I think we can draw up once more because it's not that important that we get a Precia. We still haven't seen... Oh, actually, that's a fair bit better. I don't know if we want to show we have this. It's probably better than having a Precia down clicklessly, though. So we'll get that, and then we'll install another one. Uh, we can just install that on the side. And from here, they now they popped it so we don't get double pad tap value, and we can just throw out one of these. I don't think they're going to be that valuable. It's a cheap double install. Dragging doesn't work anymore. I think I'll just do it the hard way. Kind of playing the sick interdiction play you're about to do. Rob definitely knows we're playing the deck list of the week. So Rob probably has that list open, just like checking out what's good. So I think our big play right now here is just get Stargate up in pressure. So they probably have border control. I've seen a lot of these jammier pollen lists. I think they're pretty sweet. And now we have to deal with the uh, with this um, surveyor, and we don't have really good options. Like we do have Ika, which is mediocre. The cool thing here is that we can SMC. We could actually consider stim hacking this remote. It's probably not the worst. Uh, losing the clone chip would be the worst, uh, but we could stim hack this remote. It can get through a lot of stuff. Uh, we can use this to get an Ika on the table for two credits, and then install our Angolo from hand, and that's pretty good. It's also a cheap way to get our Angolo down. I'm pretty good just uh, stim hacking this. If they res one big guys, they can't res a second. There's also a chance we just Angolo this. Uh, this uh, surveyor. Imagine not saying GLHF in 2019. I was focused on chat. We didn't. The other chat. All right. That's Eli. I don't actually know what their barrier breaker is. Oh, it's Crowder. How quaint. Okay. I'm going to actually trash a cash. Uh, I didn't do the math. Can I actually drag these? Why won't it let me drag anymore? How? Why not? We can get the Stargate with the clone chip, hopefully. Uh, did I fuck the math up? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we have enough money. Hosted on Leprechaun. Slash Trashworks. No, I don't think so. Hmm. Any plans for another eight-hour stream? Those are fantastic. That'd be really cool. I've been pretty busy these last couple weeks. Hey, Cryptogram, thanks for the follow. Try reconnecting. Will do. I'll just leave game and come back. Um, I think I want to do that. The weekends have been pretty busy lately. I think they'll get a bit slower in like the next couple weeks. This weekend, I'm uh, very busy. Next weekend, though, I'm actually going to be streaming for a while. Uh, there is a tournament. I don't know if I've been confirmed for that. There's a tournament. Star goes, Stargate, yeah, definitely goes on lap. How's it going, Jim? Uh, so we might be casting something next weekend? I don't know. Oh, maybe during prompts? It used to be, it used to, hey, it used to um, work. Okay, so we're gonna engulf this, which is expensive. We can still trash Rashida here. It's this weekend, yeah, it's this weekend, but the top cuts is next weekend. So that's Rashida we can trash. Uh, that's important. Uh, so now this is probably the Anansi, so Stargate play is looking pretty good. Luckily we lost, we lost the worst card. Uh, if we proco, we get credits, so we're just gonna proco a couple times, probably three times, just to fill our hand. Proco, ooh, scavenge. Oh, I didn't know we had that. Yeah, one. Well, let me. It's highlighted too, which is weird. I don't. Cool, we got the double install. Discard. Oh yeah, fuck, we have brain damage. 
Uh, I'm dumb. I feel like Scavenge is probably the least important. I don't know actually why Scavenge is in this deck. Yeah, Scavenge is really good with you have David. I don't think we have very good Scavenge targets. Getting into Kobe down early also be pretty sweet. It saves us a uh, pretty penny. Three Parisia, yeah, we're teched. We are definitely teched. I don't think we like the Scavenge that much, do we? Yeah, so if you haven't, I don't know if it's too late to sign up, but Nisei is doing a standard tournament in Most Wanted 3.3, the same Most Wanted list that World is up. We can't run this remote the whole time. Luckily, they only have three credits, so if they score, it's not that bad for us. If we draw, they have four, but whatever. Try the middle cache. <laughs> now we've highlighted all of them. Ah, oh, fuck. That's fine. We'll just we'll figure it out. Uh, we could run HQ. We don't know where the restricted card is. They could have food. I'd imagine it's food. Uh, could honestly be Obakata. I feel like we just want to... Uh, we could clone chip. We need to get a bit more money because we want to clone chip into um, Stargate and put the pressure on. This. If this is a Rashida, it's really bad for us. That's good. So I think we'll hedge fund and double install these. I know we're wishing out technical writer value, but this is probably not going to be a long game. And this is not going to do anything for us besides give us MU. Scavenge is a cute. I need three credits right now. Yeah, that's true. It's like, because you can scavenge cash and it's three credits plus technical writer plus double install. Like that's, that's definitely cute. Uh, generally, you don't love events inside, um, what's it called? Inside uh, Haley decks. And that is like an event that helps you install cards, which is super cool. All right. I think we're going to push it. I think we're going to go for the, we're going to go for the aggressive play here. I don't want to click to give him another credit. I really think this is an Anansi. I think it has to be an Anansi, unless they drew two Eli's somehow. Um, so we're going to clone chip for uh, Stargate. Oh, that's actually really expensive. I think we'll pop this after. Uh, we can install something from hand. It's not particularly good. Hmm, it's not great. We don't get a lot of value here. Because uh, that's a six credit play. I think we can draw once. OK. Okay, well, we'll just go for it. We'll put the pressure on. Uh, we're not getting a double install, which is really unfortunate. We could double inst No, we can't really. So that's hosted. We're going to get the Stargate. We're going to host the Stargate. We're going to pop this. We're going to Stargate. We have N'Golo, and N'Golo is crazy. You can face check any one ice. Try to move the hand to cash, then discard it. That's a cool idea. Yeah, so it looks like that's an Anansi. And so they really need to get money again. If that's Rashida, that's the money they need. So we can trash stuff here. Marcus Batty seems like the worst. IP block is not that bad with Corroder. We can even trace it. Scarcity resources is okay. We're set up. So we can actually just trash the IP block and run again. That's probably best. Because then they're not drawing ice, which is what they need. This is good. You want to run. Stargate's so powerful. So now we know that they drew a scarcity. If you're writing notes, by the way, you can now write notes. That's really important. It looks like the Nancy is going to come up here, which if they res that, they go down to one credit and they can't score this. So worst case is the Nancy into NGO front. And if they res the Nancy, they can't score, which is fine. So I think we're going to go for it. Paulano while pooler feels bad. Yeah, it does, right? Picture frame check. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just got it. I think we'll do it here. Yeah, there's a Nancy. Okay, so they have three credits. Oh, they have more credits than I thought they would. Whoops. All right, we don't have a good answer to this. I think we're probably going to end up doing admin at that strength. Because that's really expensive. I think we want to stim hack that out, though. We can't really afford this. Nisei Mark II Surveyor IPO. So we could run again. Obviously, just taking the Nisei is a problem. So that means that's, there's a Nisei in there, likely. And they're drawing a Surveyor, which I think they want on R&D. There's no way we're running through this again. Uh, we probably want to run archives unless we're worried about um, preemptive or the opposite. Sorry, excuse me. So we'll draw once. Ow, oh, fuck. We should have double installed these first. So we would have got another credit. Or do we already draw this turn? We already drew this turn. Okay, whatever. So if they score the Nisei, they go down to zero. And then we can uh, Stargate hopefully again. It might be a bit too expensive. All right, and we're on game point. We still have to fight with Future Perfect. It looks like it is an Issei, and they're going down. So they're on game point. We're on game point. They have no money, luckily. Um, but we still are struggling to get through the Nancy. Uh, we really are struggling to get through the Nancy. Uh, this is why David's obviously good in this sort of deck. I don't know why the inf where the influence that could have been on David is going. I guess on Croder. And these pad tabs. I think it's largely Croder. I don't even love cash in this deck where we just have three spec work and no other really value besides, I guess, Haley. Okay. Well, this is a good way to get rid of them. 
All right, so we definitely want to... How much is this? This is... I think we'll gamble first. The only thing we're weak to here is preemptive. We're just going to keep stargating. Again, if we get a... We probably should have done that in the other order. Because if we did stargate and we hit a future perfect here and we get into archives, they have no money to defend it. So I don't think we needed to gamble there because I think we're still going to be over five. Oh, actually, maybe we weren't. We would have been on four, but that's fine. IPO. Uh, that's a very bad card for them. Eli, it's annoying. Thimble Rig is one credit, so we're going to trash the Eli. We just need to find the future perfect. Discard down to one card. We don't need another console, do we? Check HQ. They have Surveyor Scarcity. I don't remember what else. Yeah, checking HQ is okay. The thing is we go for singles, and the Stargate is so much more likely to close the game off, let alone lock out their ice. So I feel a lot better about it. But now they have Nisei and probably a Marcus Batty, and they need to res this ice, so I think we can lock them. We just need to find a better way to get into um, R&D. I think we might start clone shipping and clots, unfortunately. Again, we getting this admin down, we have to pay eight, and then we spend three at pop, which is okay. Let's give them some more money, I guess. Okay, one cash we don't have. We'll remember that. So we actually want to throw this out so we can clone ship it. I don't get the cash without a pawn shop. I don't entirely. It's a bit of value, though. It, it's it's value. Because you can install it clicklessly, usually, and you get a technical writer. I think we want to double install this. Then we can't discard a card, which sucks. Whatever, we'll do this first. We're not getting the admin down, but we largely want to get the admin down while we're stim hacking, just so we don't pay for it, because we can't pay for it. We might actually just install a single clone chip, just so we can discard this at the end of our turn, and probably isn't the worst. We'll go here and find a future perfect, right? Or should we just do that now? We can't discard this by choice. Precy is a target. Yeah, Priest is another target for sure. So I don't know, because we really want to get this down. This is really expensive, but they're in a pretty bad spot. We can keep the stim hack up for next turn anyways if we need it. They jam for the remote. Uh, it's pretty bad with Nisei token, but whatever. All right. This man, this is expensive. Seven. Thimble rig, that's fine. IPO. Slot machine's annoying. IPO, it's very hard for them to play it. They have double IPO, so we'll take the slot machine. They have to do credit, credit, hedge fund, and then the IPOs are a threat. They're very unlikely to draw the slot machine this turn, so I think we'll just trash the IPO, actually. That might be wrong. And I think we're only going to install a single clone chip, just because we do really want to throw this out. We do really want to throw the admin out. Both clone chips, stim hack, install cash. And I'm an out of hand. Oh, that's totally another option. You're right. That's probably way better. I think we fucked that up. Because then we can double clone chip. You're right. Maybe we want to just clone chip for that. All right. Yeah, that's the problem also. Is if we stim hack, we can't... Um, we can't uh, Stargate. So let's go. Yeah, this is super inefficient. Yeah, we should have done that a while ago. Damn, we're good. Holy shit, we're good. We're so good at this game. Whew. Under as much to learn Shaper ways. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm telling you, Shaper's my worst faction. I got some pretty shitty comments last time we played Shaper. It was a much more complicated deck, I think. Uh... What's up, Rob? Oh, thanks. Okay, slot machine, which is a five strength, so we can break it with admin, so it's not that bad. Celebrity gift is pretty bad, but I think they're gonna do credit credit hedge fund or credit credit IPO, so that might not be the worst. Celebrity gift shows us their hand. But they can do celebrity gift jam, which is an issue. But I think I don't know, maybe they only have three twos. I think we run HQ again this turn. Fuck a slot machine makes this stronger. We don't want to do that. We're not drawing this turn, right? Okay. Think about Rider with Scarcity on. They probably have four twos are running that grid. I don't think so. I don't think they're running the grid. I don't think the grid is good enough in this. So Celebrity Gift gives us a credit. We gotta see probably their whole hand. They only have four cards, so it's not full Celebrity Gift. They had a Yagi Uda. So it has to be a Yagi Uda in the server. It has to be a Yagi Uda. And honestly, I don't care if they score the Yagi Uda because it doesn't make them win the game. But it was in there. We missed it. 
I feel like everything's known HQ. Terrence, just about. Apparently we missed something. But we know IPO survey with Timber so we have to run through the server twice, and we don't really have the money to do it. So I think we're just going to keep stargating them. Uh, we have another gamble, so I think we want to... No, we don't. Okay, so whatever. Never done a gift to less than full value, so broke. So maybe trashing the gift was right, actually. I think trashing the gift was way way better than what we did. Okay, well, hey, we're going to keep doing the thing that we keep doing. Uh, we're kind of giving up on the remote, and we're just trying to win off of this. They couldn't say one of these stargates if they're really desperate. For what it's worth, this only has one subroutine. I guess they were considering it last time. Hedge fund? Macrophage? Technically, we have a virus, but doesn't really matter. And a Nancy. So I think we're going to trash the hedge fund because they need money. The Nancy will come up later. All right, we're going to start drawing. Hmm. I think we're just going to draw once more. Our hand size is three. Whatever. We want to burst draw. So. Uh, probably aren't gonna lose our Proco if we do. It's fine. SMC gets very little. I think it gets just to Kobe. The MU is fine. I think we'll get rid of the. Honestly, this is probably worse, but I think SMC is actually flexible, and it's a cheap install. Our MU is almost full. We actually can't even install the SMC. Oh wait, one, two, three. No, we can. I forgot. This is not a real cache. It's a phantom cache. Uh, I don't think we have another hardware in the deck, though, so I don't think we're going to sell that. Trashing the gift gives them a hedge, though. Hmm. Do we know what this is? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, that's good. So what's the one card in the hand? This is why you write notes in Netrunner. Luckily, we can just go up. So what do they do? Ice, ice. So what was it? Looks like it's Surveyor Thimble Rig. So we don't have, D uh, what's it called? Man, uh, our kingdom for, uh, what's it called, a uh, data sucker. If we want to run the remote, like this is what? It's going to be seven credits for them to res? Probably didn't install the macrophage. No, the macrophage is on top of their deck. They drew the hedge fund. So they have a hedge fund in their hand, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, so they they may I don't think they installed the macrophage. So Nancy's on top of the deck. That's an issue. I think we just money up. I'm so glad you can write a note to remind myself to start turn triggers on a play DRM if they run last HQ. <laughs> the people are gonna fuck that up at worlds, and that's a game loss. It's risky to play this, but the thing is the game's gonna be more than one turn. If we draw, we get a credit too. They already have 15. I guess we will. Is scavenge good? We're getting to the point where Obokat is actually hard to hard to steal. Um, man, Takobi's at the bottom. Takobi actually would be pretty sweet. We can click for a credit or we can install. In theory, it's not that much better than clicking for a credit than installing this, right? It gives us both of these, but these are actually a click to take, so hope it's good enough. That'd be a warning? No, you can't. You can't shuffle your deck. It's a problem because like if you have daily business show, if you have stuff like that, and you shuffle your deck, it's impossible, impossible to fix. So this is an Anansi. We did find the Takobi. So we can scavenge for a cache and install the Takobi. That's value. Again, David would be sweet. We could have just recurred David's over and over again. David is so good to get through Surveyor. At the end, we just flow tags. It doesn't really matter, right? I don't think we're going to be installing any more programs. I'm going to go ahead and pop this. And I know we're at one MU, but this cache isn't real. It's a fake cache. So we don't know the top card. Uh, in theory, that's also... Uh, we could run it. We honestly could run it. We also could run this remote. They have Marcus Batty, which is a problem. It's a Nisei Batty. It's basically coming like next turn we have to run here, and then they Nisei the Stargate, and then we have to run here. I think we're just going to click for credits. I think all we need in this matchup now is money. We could consider running Archives, but it seems very unlikely that we hit something here. Not impossible, but just kind of unlikely. I think we're just going to click for credits. We just need credits. We have all our breakers, right? Oh, actually, no, we have our Ika. We don't actually have a Sentry Breaker. Why is this not Nanotech? Holy shit, Nanotech is so good. Like, Nanotech actually gets through uh, Surveyor for, like, what? 
four credits, give or take. Cash is a lie. Go with the restricted card, may not see cash with that ASAPs, yeah. Okay, so this has a chance of being obviously the last Project Yagi Uda. I think it's more likely that we get away running R&D. Uh, we got the credit, they got the credit from uh, Beth. It actually might have happened already, so last turn maybe we wanted to draw. I think we just Stargate. We might need to install our Ika. One, two, three, four, five. We probably have to install our Ika. Because if we hit Surveyor into uh, Anansi, actually that's fine too. Okay. Kingdom for a data sucky. It's important. Tracking the clash on your browser. Uh, okay, so I think this is a thimble rig. So this one is... Do we flow tags? I honestly think we flow tags at this point. It saves us one credit. Is that worth floating tags? Yeah, we'll flow tags. Yeah, we're going to tag me. It's a Ruse City, could be. Oh, touche. Thanks, Rob. I forgot we have Takobi. Just we wanted that data sucker so bad. Oh, this is probably not a good red. It lets them reposition, which is actually pretty good. But it's one credit to get a Takobi counter, which is pretty good at this point in the game. So this is again three. They could use their uh, Nisei token right here. They might need to. Like, it's super risky. Yeah, that was credit for Takobi counter. So they could use the Nisei token. If they do, we could run the remote. Uh, this actually we can get through relatively cheaply, but we need the Ika down, which is a huge problem because once they trash this Ika, we can't get the Ika back, but they're on four credits. So I think we just install the Ika, try and trash this cache if that's possible, and then we can run the remote. Uh, they have credits for the Marcus Batty game, but if they spend more than two credits, we're fine. There's an IP block somewhere. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they trash the Ika. It's, it's okay for us. It's not the worst. You're totally right. Uh, no, I don't think we want to install the clot. Uh, I think we pop this. I don't think we're going to install any other programs. And we can run it. Uh, I don't think we're going to run this server twice. Am I wrong? They actually could border control us here. Both caches. Yeah, totally. Maybe we don't play Shaper today if this is a problem. Okay, that's an IP block. Uh, they can now they're down to two credits, so this run is not that important. It will trash a Marcus Batty and a, R a Rashida in theory. Wait, we have an AI. Oh, we do have an AI. Okay, we're playing tag me. That's fine. Um, it's four strength, which is annoying. We have to break both subs, or we can just go tag me. Uh, I didn't do the math, but this sounds right. Ah, oh, fuck, this is so expensive. This might be wrong. Oh, we didn't, we didn't Stargate, right, 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 I totally forgot. I was like, what do we Stargate? Also, we don't know what this is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and... Oh. I don't think this is a good run. They might have to just jam a Nisei. Takobi counts for remote ice? Plus three? I think I've been doing them. I used two on Eli. All right, so at this point we can trash Marcus Batty or Rashida or win the game. Marcus Batty will keep us out. We're one credit short. So actually maybe taking the IP block was totally wrong. Atman the Surveyor. Uh, we can't. You can't actually use Takobi on an AI. No, this is not AI. What did Takobi affect the trace? I'm not sure what you mean. You can't Takobi. Takobi is not AI. Otherwise, it'd be absurd. You play this with Turtle, it'd be your only breaker.
So, they could play the Marcus Batty game. Apparently they're not. So, we'll check the top one. La Costa Grid. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. I stand corrected. That's the Marcus Batty. We definitely want to trash that. Seems okay. And now we're both fucked. Now we're both fucked. Turtle is Takobi. It's Leonardo. Man, Turtle and Takobi would be dirty. Just dirty. Uh, this one doesn't really matter that much. I guess it does because they have like other credit cards, but um, they can't score. They don't have enough money. We don't know what that card is. Uh, we have two credits. We could draw once to get a credit. Seems kind of bad. Well, it's actually two credits with Proco, which is okay, but it gives them a credit. Uh, it's important that they don't get six credits, right? Because then they can res through La Costa and then triple advance, which would be a problem. So we don't want to do that. Um, thinking about this remote, how much does this cost? This costs three. This costs question mark. And this costs, if we want to Kobe, what does it cost? So we, can, we can't bring this to strength. We could, I don't think we run HQ. I think this is just uh, like an IPO and some shit. This is bad. We might actually just click four here. Takobi, hosting Takobi is expensive. Oh man, this is tight. What's our last card? Do you think you ever enter the remote again? Yeah, we could. What's the chance that this is a stim hack? No, it's 100% not a stim hack. What is our last card? Do you mind? Peek at my last card. We could like go through the deck or we can just peek at the last card. I don't know. They get the six next turn anyways, why? It's a spec work. Eh, it's not, it gains three credits. It's not the worst. He had another spider. He did. So in theory, we could get some burst money, right? Like we could draw for two. We could spec work. Uh, actually, we don't have any targets for spec work. We have no caches. Um, the ninja turtle. So what do we do? <laughs> Stem hack. It's all that matters. So we have a big chance of here being okay. We need to get through this. So that is two credits to boost, two to change. That's two, four, five, and this is six, seven, eight. So we can click for four, and then we can go for it next turn. And basically, fork them between resing this ice. They can always move the thimble rig back if they need to. I, I think we just click for four credits. I don't think there's anything we do here. You should know everything in the hand because install bully. They drew his remote. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if that's a Rashida, that's bad for us, obviously. Um, but then they draw HQ heavily, and we can just run HQ four times. We have no HQ pressure. That's a huge weakness of Shaper right now. How's it going, Corey? <laughs> Love the title of the stream. Yeah, we're going to be playing with the next. It's going to be a bit of Haley today, which is always like a hard matchup. Not a hard matchup. Like it's, it's a bit tricky to play, and I get self-conscious about goofing it. One of their good plays actually might be to res this for three credits just so they get a counter every turn. That might be crazy. It plays around Beth, and giving us a credit with Beth seems... Pretty good right now. Yeah, I think they do that. Even if this gets a counter on an NGO front, that's kind of cool, right? And we've only seen one NGO. This might be Dope La Costa. Yeah, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. La Costa Grid, new card alert. So next turn they can score on the remote. Yeah, I like that La Costa res. It plays around uh, Beth. And it's the minimal amount of investment they need here. So I think we definitely have to go all in. Um, I honestly think we draw. Again, we don't spec work anything and that we just go for it. We could consider spec working the Takobi. And we also can consider whether or not we can run the remote. This doesn't have to be an advanceable card, so this could be anything. Spec work Atman. Atman's really good, though, for the Nancy if we want to go in, if we want to Stargate. The question is whether we Stargate or whether we run the remote. Running the remote, we know how much it's going to cost. This is clickable. This is one. Uh, this is two, three. And then we'll break this fully and we'll break this fully so we can get through this. Do we run the remote? Thimble didn't move. Oh, do you want it to? Oh, after they draw. The closet does seem cool, isn't it, Philip? How's it going? Hasn't seen the restrictor right. Could be in big trouble if they're on Oboe. Yeah, if they're on Oboe, we can't score it anyways, though, so it doesn't really matter. You get a Stargate run out of it? What are you talking about? We're gonna get Stargate run anyways, right? Playing one of Escher is good punishment. I'm sh Shaper for particular HQ. I think sh Shaper's really good. Wolf. 
Okay, they put the surveyor on the remote. All right, so that makes this more likely to be an agenda, but it makes this more likely to be able to run. In fact, I know we can run this, right? This is one credit, this is three credits. So this has to cost four credits, which is kind of unlikely for four credits. I think it's an Excalibur here, honestly. This is probably Excalibur. I think they, we hit the Excalibur and then we lose the game. So we have to like be able to engulf the Excalibur, which would be two credits. We can use it to Kobe counters. So this is three, this is four. And then we make it as code gate, we break it for one. Uh, we have a problem with the future perfect, but then we could draw. I think we're going to go for the Stargate. I think this is impossible, right? It sure belongs in every green deck. I think Asher's super good. Yeah, if, I think this is, they're trying to get us with the, um, what's it called? The Excalibur. And Excalibur got really good right now if Shaper isn't playing in Golo. They struggled to deal with Excalibur. Fuck it, let's try. They can move this around. I don't think that's good for them, though. Let's show me. Even if they res an Excal, they can probably score here, right? And Excal is really good against Stargate because then we can't scoop up the agenda. Oh, okay, wow. That was easier than I thought. All right, so we have a chance here of seeing a winning agenda. Fuck! Shit! Oboe and Remote? That'd be so unlikely, right? Even Oboe and Archives is possible. Okay, none of this matters. I think we're just gonna run HQ, run HQ, run archives. And we can't see Lobo, so maybe we've already lost. There's a lot of agendas on the table. Celebrity gift. We'll run archives, I guess, for future perfect, but I think it's Obo. If it's future perfect, we have two shots here. Okay, I think it was like a scarcity or something. <laughs> Noto? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we should put Noto in every deck. Noto ID is so good with Stargate when you run RD, run archives. <laughs> Notoriety says gain one point after you've made a run on all three essential servers. Uh, good game. We just run out of gas. We run out of gas. So we saw, how many Stargates did we fire? I think we fired like five Stargates and we saw one agenda. Is that wrong? Global food. It was food. I, I thought it was food. That makes a lot more sense considering how jammy this deck is. Hey, good game. Quest completed. Oh man, quest completed would be sweet too. Hey, thanks, you too. All right, I wonder if we misplayed it. I think that admin turns actually did fuck us up. I think we should have stim hacked that admin earlier. We would have saved a fair bit of credits. There was a better play to do that for sure, but we ran out of money. I think going tag me was totally correct. There's no reason not to at that point. Um, for what it's worth, if we did have turntable in this matchup, it wouldn't have mattered, but we just couldn't find agendas. We just couldn't find it. Uh, so that's three. There's none in HQ. Uh, they didn't top deck one, right? So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So there's probably just two agendas left in thirteen cards, right? Actually, one agenda? No, is that right? Yeah, there's only one agenda left in thirteen cards. It's probably worth checking out the numbers. But they only have to run 20 cards. And this is like very similar if you ever played back in the day when the HB decks were playing two global food initiatives and then all the two pointers. This is like that list. And it's actually really, really, really difficult for the runner, particularly if you're not playing any sort of like agenda boosting cards like Mad Dash, which is a restricted card, so they know we're not playing it. Uh, or things like Notoriety or Freedom Through Equality. It's really hard to win against this sort of agenda suite because you need to hit almost, if not entirely, half the agendas in their deck to win. Yeah, two agendas left? Did I fuck it up? Yeah, so it should be another... Okay, so it's two and 13. So it's another Yagi Uda and another Global Food. Yeah, so that's agenda suite, right? There's nine agendas. You have to have four of them. So you have to get about half. Excuse me, I goofed it. Yeah. Umo Yaga. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's the thing. Um... We probably should have done the math to see what the chance of running server uh, server R and D is. For what it's worth, we didn't check if we were capable of running uh, server one, which we might have been able to. I think it would require us like drawing first click just to get two credits, and then we have to run server one, and then we'd have to like take tags and surveyor. Uh, we might even have to just trace IP block, which is pro oh we can't actually. We have to break a sub because we have an AI, and then we have to like take the tags, which should have been okay. I've been playing against it a bit. People set up and get their stargate down and run out of money. Yeah, they really do. And uh, this is probably a bad preface because the next deck I'm going to play is something that I built and I played for the uh, GNK yesterday. Um, technically won the GNK, but I don't like this runner deck. I just think it does some cool stuff, especially with the new cards. 
Um, but like I'm finding out all these like Schaefer engines that spend so much time with like expensive N'Golo and like building all these like weird shit like we're about to do in a second. All of that stuff is like seems to be worse off than just playing like Data Sucker Mimic, uh, s- fucking stim hacking a study guide or just playing study guide on top of uh, multi threader. And then just having like an eight strength Koge breaker, a uh, way to deal with big sentries for cheap. Like it's that seems so much easier than anything else. Yo, system, how's it going? It's been a while. How you doing? How you feeling? Also, Ben Davy, how's it going? Hey, welcome to the chat. Hopefully you're having a good Thursday. It might be Friday. I don't think it can be Wednesday. It seems important. Means Rizeki is required for Angolo. Yeah, maybe. Rizeki is pretty slow though. And like Cabanessa Wu Rizekiing out is like still kind of slow. And MU is tight too, right? Like we can't even Rizeki to Kobe. Eh, slots, slots, slots. It has. I'm okay. Hey, cool. Got my first tournament around two years and it's a random ID tournament. I got con. Any tips? Oh, fuck. Um, Cyber Trooper Talit is new. Uh, that's cool. Uh, for what it's worth, Stimhack seems pretty cool in Khan. Uh, because you can use your Stimhack money to, like, install a Femme Fatale for free. Which is cool once you pass a piece of ice. You probably want to be playing cards like Inside Job. Just so that you can go pass a first ice and install stuff for free. Uh, Khan's pretty difficult. Uh, I, I, Khan's definitely not very good. You could also just play Khan as, like, Tempo. Does Khan say install an Icebreaker or install a program? She has no influence. It's an icebreaker. You could try playing the break and enter suite, which might be a bit better with Cyber Trooper Talent, a card we're going to play with. Excuse me, I hit the mic today. <laughs> ben Davey, you got scammed. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be hard. It's icebreaker, damn. The birds are crap. So much fun. Yeah, the birds are just not great. The birds seem strictly worse than just playing, uh, like, over, what's it called? Emergency Shutdown and or Rubicon Switch. I don't like the birds. But hey, talking about silly bird stuff, this deck has no birds in it. But this is what I built. It's the... So I wanted to try out a couple things um, at the GNK, and I built the Shaper deck. Uh, it's not going to open here. We'll open the other one. I iterated at work. We got to play at lunch, and then I played him like, okay, I'm going to make some changes, and I just printed out cards. Thank you, work printers. Got a good corp, though. Got Argus. Oh, that's sweet. That's fucking sweet. Um, this is the idea. So check this out. Wasn't there a hardware that did what Cyber Trooper did? Yeah, it's called LODS Processor. It rotated, unfortunately. I like that card. So, like, good night. Hey, good night, Jessica. Good luck on Monday. Let me know how it goes. Thanks for dropping by. Okay. Chameleon, right? So, Chameleon's a good card, right? You can put this, you can install this, and then it becomes a, a five strength breaker, right? So, they can break Sentry Code Gate or Barrier, your choice. That's pretty cool. That's the idea. You play Chameleon with Cyber Trooper Talent, and you get this five strength breaker, and that's pretty sweet. Breaking one for one subroutine gets through almost all the ice in the game, besides some of the really big stuff. So Blue Sun's a problem, and like DNA Tracker. So okay, well, we have Takobi for that. This deck actually looks kind of similar to the last deck. Uh, it does have Aesop's Pawn Shop though, which is a bit better with the cash and stuff like that. Uh, but on top of it, we have some other weird stuff, and that's we're playing MK Ultra and Black Orchestra. And the reason why this happened is I originally wanted to rebuild uh, uh, the old sort of like, um, what's it called, Exile decks. And those old Exile decks I used to play used to have Aesop's Pawn Shop on top of MK Ultra, Black Orchestra, and Paperclip. Paperclip wasn't restricted at the time. And the idea is that with three Sahasrara, we're down to two, and it might be wrong, is that we can run and install them for free from your uh, from your heap for free with Sahasra, uh, gaining credits on Technical Writer, and drawing a card with um, with uh, Exile. And that was pretty cool. Now, I wanted to play these, because also these, if you pawn them when you install them for free, and you reinstall them for free, they come in at 3 strength and 5 strength, right? And that's actually a fair bit better. Black Orchestra at, at, five, at 4 strength is actually pretty okay. It deals with most of the big guys for 3 to 6 credits. Big F to Sherazada, big F to, to Degdeer. Um, and MK Ultra comes in at three strength, which is okay. Again, you have Takobi Tech. But the biggest reason why I want to do this is by installing MK Ultra and then by installing Black Orchestra during a run, it lets you install Chameleon from hand with your Haley trigger. And that's a huge thing that I found is that Chameleon seems okay on paper. Again, it's probably just worse than playing Study Guide like competitively. Um, but the fact that you're installing your Black Orchestra during a run and then installing your Chameleon, even if you don't use your Black Orchestra, this lets you not waste a click every turn with Haley, right? So the idea is that like you run, they res the ice, you're like, oh, it's a sentry. I'm gonna install my MK Ultra for free and then install my chameleon and use my chameleon, and then you have pawn t- targets and chameleon comes back. That was the idea. And so you're gonna spend less clicks chameleoning down. You do still have a strong economy, and this is technically infinite economy as long as you can run and install these for free with Sahasara. Uh I played the deck. It technically only won 
one game, two games, actually that day of four. Uh, they were close though, and one of the game I probably think we were favored. Uh, the, an agenda was installed as ice on accident, which sucks. But uh, I found that this deck struggles, and a lot of the games I played were against scarcity resources, which I think a lot of corps are running because that's a huge issue for this deck. I think you just tank it and play Proko and a single uh, technical raider, and you're good to go. And I'm there's other convoluted issues like getting your Sahasaras down. You probably want to play three of them. They're super important. Uh, you need MU, so I'm trying net chip. The original version had less NU. Uh, we're on Inti because our clone chips are like tightly taxed. One of the biggest issues with Chameleon is you lose it to net damage, and it's a, such a big issue if you have to clone chip in a Chameleon. Like, it sucks. Uh, net damage is really strong against this deck. That's what I found out. Like, stealing Obakata is so hard when you have to lose your Chameleon. It sucks. This luck, like, deck looks like it would have trouble against Asset Spam. Honestly, not that bad, Philip. We do have a single Astrolabe, but most importantly, we just have two Parisias. I probably can keep up. We also do have Stargate, which is super important, because if they're just spamming and it gets out of control, you can Stargate run R&D. Generally, their centrals are a bit porous. Kiryu, how's it going? Where's the auto script trigger? Yeah, it's three influence and not particularly good in the meta with border control and Marcus Batty. And like end the run, like hot end the runs like Nisei are so hot right now because it's like a really good way to win as a corp that it's not going to happen. And Gola had the advantage to paint an ice. Yeah, this deck also could like probably just drop the chameleons and just play like uh, oh, Palangis and probably be really good too. I think we're doing something weird, not particularly amazing. Speaking of study guide, why doesn't every shaper just run the card? It seems clearly superior to any decoder. I don't know. That's the thing is like I spent so much time and effort with this deck and trying to get it to work and thinking of like all the optimal plays. And I feel like if we just installed the study guide and stim hack turn one, it would be way better. We'd have a permanent chameleon. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, another big struggle with this deck that I found out later on after one game of testing is that it didn't originally have an AI. That was a big thing with N'Golo. Uh, is that it let you deal not only with any ice, but it specifically let you deal with uh, things like Excalibur, which aren't restricted and very good right now. So an Excalibur on the remote was like GG with border control and Nisei token. So I put a Maven in, and honestly, Maven's not a terrible card. This, for what it's worth, could easily be also, uh, what's it called, the Brahmin. But I'm not very good with Brahmin decks. I feel like Brahmin decks want a bit more support. Brahmin is a lot better with David, and we're not playing David because we're doing some silly other stuff. Turntable's cute. Would Brahmin be better than Maven so you can reinstall a Chameleon? Cutthroat, how's it going? Totally. Uh, good question. There's a delay. Um, I, arguably not, because it goes on top of your deck. And then you have to draw. I don't know. I doubt it. There's some counters like SCS Drone Agenda, which is bad for Study Guide or Trojan Horch. Yeah, you're totally right. But then you can like tech dummy box if you really are concerned about that. Like there's ways around it for sure. I think if you're playing that, you definitely have to play protection. So you just play dummy boxes and you're playing extra Parisias and misdirections and shit. You just keep one in hand. Jogging, how's it going? That's a big hello. How you doing, man? It's a problem for any breaker that isn't conspiracy. It is. Uh, we got three clone chips, and I do have a reclaim in here, which might not be right. I think this was originally, uh, this probably should be a daily cast. Uh, I think I cut it for reclaim just because I was really scared of, um, this is also 46 cards, don't judge me. Uh, yeah, I was scared for, um, oh, I getting, keep getting wrecked by scarcity. Shapers have no current. Scarcity is so good against Shaper. They play all the resources, and they got important resources, and they don't got any currents. They don't got no currents. That's good speak. I don't know why I called it Birdo Haley. I guess because of Talit, whatever. Anyways, this thing has some really cool stuff. It feels cool when one this installs and you install this, and it's it's good fun. Reclaim is this garbage. Yeah, events are not particularly good in Haley decks. You want to get the double install. Reclaim is a double free install. Actually, I'm gonna make it a daily cast just for more money. Uh, and events don't combo really well. Scavenge actually technically is kind of like an event. You might be right about that. That actually could easily be a scavenge. I'm going to try to daily cast, and if we keep getting scarcity, we'll change it. I think you're right, though, that because it's, it's like a scavenge, right? Scavenge again, give it David. Keep STR current. Feature quality current four days. Currents four days. All right. Uh, let's do this one. I had to think about that for a bit. I'd be interested to see some hard data on how many credits over games SG could save or even considering trash. I think it's nutty. Oh, there's a big chance we're going to play against uh, Close to La Roche's Blue Sun, which is a problem for this deck because they run like Chiashi and shit, and we run Inti and Chameleon, and none of that shit can deal with that. Yeah, SSO is a hard matchup because they do have some 6 and 7, 8 strength ice, and we actually can't even break 8 strength ice. We really need to Kobe. Yeah, this might be an issue. System Seizure probably isn't bad. 
System Seizure is not great with this deck because we're running like uh, things that we can't boost. Uh, specifically Chameleons, but otherwise it's it's probably not the worst. Uh, we The two early net chips suck. We want to get Proko if we can. Obviously early Gamble is okay. That hand's a lot better. If you don't know, this is SSO, which got a lot better. Let me tell you, Kayambi Grid is kind of nutty. It's really good. And it looks like they can get... Oh, they didn't even get a face down. So it looks like that's a Rashida. We have to watch out for Punitive. I think we want to just set up here. Uh, we're probably not going to get a draw with Astrolabe. And Turntable is actually really good in this matchup. We can always pawn this later. So we're going to look for a double install. We have a... This is the thing that I always struggle with. Like, do you install a Technical Writer first to, to f leave the Haley trigger? I think we don't. I think we just install Sahasra and use the credits to install Cash. Just to get our double install. Still pretty okay. Yeah, I want to try Study Guide. I also want to try Mimic and Ice Carver. Like, I feel like a lot of the basics are maybe underrepresented and probably pretty good. So, hey, that's the Rashida. As much as possible, as quickly as possible, you want to be able to contest the remote. Because if you let that three-pointer snowball in SSO, you're going to be pretty far behind. Not only does it make their ice stronger and scarier on face check, cheaper the rest, stuff like that, but it also means Kayambi Grid kind of snowball. So we really need to run here if we can. Unfortunately, that can be a Hortimer Mouseless, which is just, like, absolutely brutal. So, like, just SMC or, like... A fucking Cabanessa Wu pulling out a David is probably good enough. Unfortunately, none of that stuff is going to happen for us today. Uh, we do have the good current, or a good console, excuse me. Uh, we have a double install here if we want. We can draw to seven and double install, but it looks like they're going to snowball out of control, and we're probably just going to be installing things kind of silly. We'll see how it goes. Doesn't feel like a great opening. There it is. Hey, there it is. Five strength, good enough for a Hortum, good enough for Mouseless, good enough for... Not particularly great against Masfingo, but... Our restricted card is Aesop's. Don't have Film Critic. That's a Marcus Batty. Also a big issue. Don't have a good way to deal with it. So they are snowballing. It also could be a Kayambi Grid. Uh, we want to run here if we can on a card uh, that doesn't have advancement counters on it. So running HQ here isn't the worst. It makes them spend real money. Obviously we lose this to like a mouseless net damage will be kind of salty. But I think we'll, t we'll take the shot. We'll sh shoot our shot. This deck generally runs eight agendas, three sixes, uh, two ones. Just an ice wall. Okay. That's fine. Ish. It's not bad. Give us a Proco. Give us a Proco. We don't have a Proco. Okay, we're going to do our double install. All right, we're rolling. Or Embolus? I doubt it is Embolus. It could be, right? Are we on Compile? No, we're not. Compile seems a lot better with David, but uh, in our deck, we don't have that many ways to pull from our deck. Uh, we don't have a lot of strong cards to pull from our deck. For what it's actually worth, Compile, Compile probably should be considered with Cyber Trooper because it does have that cool synergy. But I would definitely, if I'm playing Compile, play David or the other way around. Now, this is awkward because they put a Kayambe Grid on top of this ice, which means they can't SSO on top of it, which is kind of good news for us. In theory, now it costs so much more money. It costs three to trash it, four to run this. Like, this deck snowballs out of control. You really need that inside job. You really need that DDoS. You really need to shut this shit down because now it's just crazy. And this puts a counter on anything. Blech. Oh, man. I'm not enjoying this. I think we got to play for the late game. We do have the Proco. Uh, we could just go for the double clone chip stall. We probably do. I don't want to show that we have uh, this. We could Chameleon run HQ. This is four strength, actually. They can advance this out of strength, so we can't deal with it, and we're just fucked because we're on NT for some reason. Um, eh, Maybe just take credit. I don't know. It feels bad, yo. Compile needs David for sure. It's nice with Chameleon. It's not bad with Chameleon. The thing is, like, you want Chameleon in your hand? I uh... So putting on the bottom of your deck is not good because then you have the SMC for Chameleon, which is kind of rough, but not the worst way to use SMC. If we drew an SMC, we could contest because we do have Clone Chip. We have one stim hack. This is getting much more difficult. Mass comms giving them 18, so Punitive is also a real issue. This is going to start doing damage. I don't think we can let this go. I think we just need to get a Stargate and go from there. Uh, I think we'll draw once to see if we can get the double install. We can't. So I think we're going to double install. Oh, MU is an issue, huh? I think we'll double install these two, then Proco draw. 
Fortunately, we're not using our Sahasra credits, which, you know, feels bad. Oh, fuck, we can't even do that. Oh, I cocked that up. We should have double installed these. I guess we didn't have the. Oh, no, we did have the MU. Ah, beans. We should undo, like, because, yeah, then we can Proco out of it. I totally re didn't realize I'd put us underneath four, because then we would get the credits from this. We'd get the value from this to get Proco. Uh, that's totally a fuck up. And then we could Proco here. We're losing a, a pretty big click here. I'm not installing it. We'll just draw one. Lost cost. Okay, that's good. Tony, how's it going? Lady over NT probs. Chameleon can deal with low strength lady for high. Yeah, that's what I tried. I tried actually with lady. The thing is like we were getting taxed out on like minor things like Kakugo. Kakugo is really strong against uh, Chameleon because you need cards in hand to run against Jinteki if you have like Snare and Chameleon and Obakata threat. So you were like keeping the Chameleon in hand and a lot of times it was getting trashed on accident against net damage. And then that was really bad. So I ended up having a Lady and then used all the tokens on it. I lost one clone chip, had to use the other two. It was really rough. It was really, really rough. I didn't like it um, just because our clone chips got really taxed out. We could in theory try Gauss. It seems kind of bad as well. We probably should have undone that, I'll be honest, but whatever. I'm going to do the double install now. I already did. Whoops. Uh, we could try the remote. It's going to cost us a lot of money. Okay, we have the SMC, which is good. Or we have space for it, which is also really good. So we are setting up. That sounds rough. Kagu against Chameleon and Zoof. It's really hard. And I was kind of upset about that. I was like, oh, this Chameleon thing is really cool. And it's like, oh, Jesus, what do we do? It's really difficult. This had three advancements is really cool because then they can do advanced events and jam another three-pointer. They're not going to get SSO value unless they also put an ice, which is largely impossible, but it's good. All right, so that could be a hostel. I assume they actually want to jam the hostel, and I think we might want to run this. Stim hacking it is rough. Uh, the double install here is awkward as well. I think we want to do SMC chameleon stim hack it. What do we die to? Not much. I think we got the. We have to destroy the server. I'm not gonna take the credits before. So we'll put this on code gate. Actually, we'll put it on barrier because code gate. I think we actually have to pull the MK Ultra. Um, we'll put this on a uh, barrier just cause it's harder for us. We can't deal with it. Inti is way too bad. It comes in at three strength, which isn't terrible. Actually three strength would probably be good enough. This on Kogate's probably right. And we really wanted Takobi out stat as well. All right, I think we're just going to stim hack it. I feel a lot like the 2 2 1.5 decks are super difficult in meta. Yeah, it is. And that's always the problem is when things are really strong, you can't, like, you just get pushed out. Like, this is absurd, right? Uh, we can't get out our Takobi here. We, well, we could do, well, we could with this, but we need this for uh, for barriers if we need to pull out our anti. It'll come in with more strength with Cyber Trooper. And there, we kind of need it. Oh, man, it's going to be really expensive. So I'm glad that we didn't pull barrier on this bad boy. Uh, so let's see how expensive this is. We can't use these credits. You have to use these credits for installing, so you can't use it on the SMC cost itself. Uh, if we pull Chameleon, it's just not good enough. Again, like a six strength barrier, that's super rare in this game. I think it's like basically only this card and Heimdall's are fine. You can deal with that other ways. And then like Chiashi. So that's an issue. Uh, so I think we actually have to install our Inti, which is terrible. Again, this could easily be, I guess we'll host on here. It comes at a three strength, so this is so expensive. I think actually it's too expensive for us to, to deal with anything else. Right? Seven? That puts us on two, so we can't even get through this. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, yeah, Bulwark, too. You're totally right. At least this ends the run only. I don't. Yeah, this is going to be a tor terrible matchup. We're just going to jack it around. Technically, we ended the run. So we need Tokobi down stat. We just need to do things like farm ice wall. Because this is now one strength. I, I don't think we have a chance. I really don't think we have a chance in this matchup. This is way too difficult. 
Don't you have enough for Maven? Oh, fuck, yeah, there's a chance Maven's okay. Do we have enough money for Maven? No. It's just Rashida, which is okay. You're actually right. Maven is our way out if we have one, and we just have to not pawn shop everything. Mind you, we are a pawn shop deck, so we need to keep like all the MU possible. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wow, they're on dedication ceremony. That's fucking terrifying. So not only do we have to worry about punitive, let alone like mass comms into punitive, this thing does six damage, five damage. And then they have to just score the <laughs> one X of Pock in this. They also have to score, and there's the ice that they can get value from. Dedication is really cool because you can install, dedicate, install ice. Holy shit, this is faster than I thought it'd be. But yeah, Inti's not the way. Man, if we had a, what's it called here? That'd be so good. A lady, I think. I don't even know if we could have made it. Well, here we go. Okay, we can throw that out. That's fine. If we get a double install, we get credits on Technical Writer. Not particularly good. Where's the whistleblower when you need it? Hey, right? Shazner, how's it going? Tech Writer credits? Yeah, we can do it. It takes a click, though. So we can't do it mid-run. So we can double install these bad boys. Uh, there's no real reason to. We don't want to install this because we want to install it from our heap. We don't have a Proca yet. Uh, we don't have a Pawn Shop yet. We now have a Pawn Shop. Uh, I think we also want to keep a lot of stuff installed. Um, a lot of best with new cards. Yeah, it's cool. It, it's definitely really cool. It's really weird about stuff like this, right? Like most CTM decks are the same and that doesn't bother me. But like when it's something like this, which shoehorns you into a certain design where you have to play the same ice, like there's only like seven ice, I find it much more boring because there's no flexibility in ice in SSO. And that always put me off of it, which is silly. Anyways, we're just going to stall stuff. Uh, we probably should install this. Uh, there's not a lot of sentries. Uh, surveyor. And this we actually install for free, which is cool. Comes in at three strength. It's not going to last. This card down to four cards. It's quite acceptable. Where's Spurs Whistleblower's only additional cost, and CityWorks is on Axis. <laughs> oh, take that, Ovacada. No. Oh, really? Jesus Christ, that's terrible. So bad. So bad. Imp it. You can't. You can't imp traps, can you? You can't imp snare, right? I told people you can't imp snare yesterday. Please tell me you can't imp snare. You can't imp this. On axis fires first, right? Play this game for a bit. I know all the rules. Well, this is also really important because it threatens hostile. Oh, Jesus. So we have to steal this or we lose. How do y'all feel about losing? You can, but it still fires. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so we have to like SMC into Takobi real bad. Cause this, no, we SMC into Maven. Who am I kidding? Gotta run it. Whistleblower, city works to get two damage. I think so. Ooh, there's a sentry. Wait, why does this not calculate it? So in theory, we could just pull the maven out, which would save us some money. Uh, we could install this. We're gonna spend two to install it, two to break this, or we can just spend four to break this. So it doesn't really do much. But we do have an A strength Maven. So what a time to be alive. Install Black Orchestra. We, we would for sure if we had Sahasra or Technical Writer. We don't. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's fine. This is still four. Oh, we got to play six and nine in trashes. Wow. Colossus rotated. Whistleblower stops on Axis, so it works with CWP. Does it actually? God, how do we not get punitive here? This card's so good. Oh, yeah, we're gonna do that. Thanks for asking. All right, so we can die to double punitive for sure. And they drew a fair bit. 
They were sheeted, so we're just gonna proco. We only have four cards in hand. Doesn't really matter that much. They need a double puny us yes, anyways. Uh, we have no burst econ at this point. Uh, this is actually really unfortunate because they could punitive and hit both their Aesop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trash. The Precia technically has a bit more value. Can't drag cards. Discard down to four. All right, chance of us losing both Aesop is pretty hard. Steal the gem for the on axis of City Works can fire. Oh boy. All right, we have five credits. We do have one link. Thank you, Cyber Trooper. Oh, that's why this is eight strength, because of Cyber Trooper. This is actually six strength. So they can just like ice wall out of it if they really committed to the play. And we just need like find our next MU card. <laughs> oh, man. Cash in the bin for some extra credits. Oh, we don't have MU. We could. The thing is like it doesn't matter. We're at six link. They're at seven. Well, if they play a, a mass comms or a hedge fund, we'll consider it. But right now we're fine. Besides the value punitive could be an issue because we could lose our Aesops. But like all of this and we're still not good at breaking. Like at the end of the day, Chameleon still isn't amazing. Obviously this is a weird matchup where there's like six strength ice. But in theory, we eventually Chameleon this for one credit. Feels good, but we're already breaking it for two. Paul, how's it going? Should you install Parisia when you haven't trash Kayambe? Parisia is only for assets. Uh, it's a really weird uh, restriction on only this card um, as opposed to like Scrubber or... Um, anything else so it doesn't actually do anything andre you can't break Horton with maven oh fuck oh fuck fuck shh, 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 shh. game loss game loss game loss so we would have to install this shh, fuck for honor please concede mm, yeah okay we totally fucked that up yeah we were talking about like installing us and breaking it, and we're like it's the same cost and no one it's on you chat right please help uh this could be hostile we could lose So what do we have to do? We draw once. I don't know why. Man, we need to Kobe. It's Chad's fault. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, Corey is agreeing, not quoting me. That's good. Um, so we want to get this down. We need to get this down, mind you, because we can't do the thing we did. That actually might have mattered. We might have punitive there because they considered. But we need to run this, right? Chance of being Rashida, low. Chance of being Kayambi, medium. Uh, they could res it too, which would be obnoxious. Uh, so this is two credits, this is four credits, this is installed for free, five, six. So it's six credits to run the remote, it's possible. And then if we hit the, like, turn table, holy shit, is it good. Problem is money. We only have one Stimag, we played it. Sorry about that misplay. Uh, the problem is we don't have an MK Ultra, so we can't install clicklessly. Oh, we can actually install clicklessly, but we'd also have to install this, so it'd cost us one credit. So this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll proco again. Okay, that card's important. I think we're going to go all in here. This is why you need more tech writer, right? Because we're actually going to be installing a fair bit of stuff. We also can like clone chip cash shit like that. Uh, MU is going to be an issue, but we're just going to trash things. Getting the pawn ship down last click would be good, but I don't think we're going to have enough credits. We're credit short. We can't let this go, right? Because we lose to this. And we technically do threaten SMC. But the thing is, like, even against, oh, I guess all their agendas are face up. I don't think you do install advance advance. Man, do you know what's better than most of the stuff? Just playing, uh, just play uh, a two credit, one influence. What's it called card? I hope I'm doing my math right here. That'd be really important. I can't trash things. So this deck is, we're not gonna play this deck again today. It won't let me trash things. So imagine. I don't know why. Hey, Andre, so you're now a Shaper player. I used to respect you. Oh, man. I won't be a Shaper player for long, let me tell you that. So in, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vacation. You can't even trash Rashida. Cool, nice. Gotta break this for all our money. It's really good with Maven when you have unlimited MEA, let me tell you that. Looks like it's Rashida, they would have res the other, th yeah, it's Kyambi, okay, that's like probably worst case, so we're never gonna run this again. Can't even install this, oh my god. 
Uh, I don't think we're playing this perfectly though, so I can be angry at myself. Uh, SMC gets Takobi, that's cool. Netchip actually matters a bit because they might actually race us out with Ice Walls um, when it comes to uh, uh, Maven. Like it's possible. This is technically only 8 strength. I don't think they're a hard hitting news deck, but if they are, we'll find out this turn. I really don't think they are. I really don't think they are. I think their influence is like 3 Marcus Baddies. We'll risk it. We have Clone Chip. We'll risk it. Move hand, Clone Chip the cash back. Oh yeah, we could have just done it right there. No, we couldn't because we didn't have a credit. Action. Uh, yeah. We have to do shit now. Can we do it? Is cash in the bin? No, it's not. So this is a four credit play. I think it's possible. I think we can do it. Okay, we're going to get a clash on the table. It's not going to matter because we can't run the remote anyways, but we're going to do it to send a message. It looks like we can't, but we can. There's no cash in the bin. There's cash in the bin. There's technically cash in the bin. Okay. So, clone chip for first cash. This is terrible because I can't, I can't remove the clone chips. I can't remove the clone chips. I'm just gonna do it for this. Then we install this. I can't throw the Parisi out. All right, so we still can't install cash. So we clench up the second cash. We're just going to lose the remote anyways. None of this matters. The point is we could do it. No, no, we can't. We really can't. We struggle to break a four strength ice wall. And that's the thing is like, even if we did have Lady in this deck, like our clone chips are taxed out. Got him. We're not playing this deck anymore. It's way too hard to play a deck. You can't trash cards. It's a big maven though. All right, how do we score all the points? We actually only need to score one pointer here, right? We have one credit, unlimited money. I'm glad we didn't install the Aesops actually. It would have made that turn impossible. Next level. So we don't even have Stargate. I think we just run R&D. Uh, literally have no money though. I mean, it's probably possible though. Proco, Proco, Proco. Uh, no, we just run R&D like it's our only chance. There's a border control, obviously we lose already. It's a mouseless, what does this do? This actually does end the run. Okay, so we have to... We have no clone chips. Oh fuck, I thought we had clone chips. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're gonna clone chips and install the, the chameleon. Oh, we have no clone chips. Uh, oh boy. Just take net, but it ends the run, it's advanced. GG. Nothing matters, nothing matters. I don't wanna do this. Ah, it's brutal. It is. Yeah, so what do you do with this? Like, you need to rush him down early. You need that inside job. You need the DDoS. You need to stop the snowball. If you stop the snowball, there's not too much they can do. Have you seen the form carry? I have. David, obviously, yeah, that's another really good one for sure. But even this, like, clone uh, SMC stim hack is, like, good enough to get through most stuff. Yeah. I don't know if it's... Do you play form and carry? I'm not convinced the Formicary is worth the slot though. So if you don't know the combo, 
Uh, the idea is that as long as you have a former carry on res on table, once they hit the server, they approach the server, they pay like the eight credits or whatever they need to access the Kayambi. Then you move the former carry and you res it. Then they have to deal with the former carry. It's not particularly difficult to deal with, but that also helps by boosting your surveyors if you do play them. And then uh, they have to pay another like 10 credits or eight credits because the former carry is on. Uh, it could actually be advanced with Kayambi. Yeah, yeah, totally. Maybe it is worth a slot, I don't know. We didn't see border controls, we didn't see surveyor, like even, I don't know, I feel like Kyambi is just so strong. You have to trash it too, eh, it's hard. That's really hard. I think this list is on Stargate instead of Makers. Yeah, this list definitely is on Stargate. <laughs> One pack of Makers. Apocalypse is also really good against this. If you do play Apocalypse, obviously you turn all of this, tear all this stuff down. Uh, Eater Apocalypse decks struggle a bit, obviously, because they could get a triple advanced Hordem on Essential relatively easily, and that's really important that you have a way to deal with that. On top of that, they could be playing Border Control. Border Control on Centrals is an issue, and if that's really bad, you can tech uh, Chrisiums if you really want to. New challenge and honor, stream title makes Cyber Trooper Con work. Definitely not going to do that, unfortunately, today. Uh, I want to play the runner deck that I, or corp deck I played. I just, we played a bit too much of this fiddly stuff. And the fact that we can't trash stuff, uh, it might actually be an issue uh, when it comes with anything that has too many installs. For what it's worth, Cyber Trooper Con, making it work is different than making it like fun and not frustrating, especially when you play against SSO. And that's kind of the issue, right? Like you need a deck that can compare, uh, compete against that. And like, if we just play con, like, ah, it's, it's a problem, right? Obviously we're in the casual lobby and all that, but uh, if we play against that, like we have no chance with con, do we? Femme Fatale is good against that deck for what it's worth. Pac, SSO, then sell with Aesops. <laughs> Only three influence. It is, but it's also all our cards and we have to clone ship them all back in. That doesn't seem approachable. I guess we do have two bin breakers. That's something, huh? Uh. I'm gonna get my Wayland deck and I'm gonna build it. It's in a box over there. I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna build it card by card. This deck was heavily based off of lists that have been online, uh, Riper lists. I think that's, I don't wanna miscredit it, but Riper, I think that's like, rota I don't know what the R stands for. Oh, this is triple baddie, that's good. So a big reason, oh, we haven't even talked about the most wanted list. Fuck that, let's do news. Shit, chat. I imagine most of all you know about this because we've been playing in it recently, but there's been a new most wanted list. I opened this tab and totally forgot to talk about it. There's a new most wanted list. Let's talk about, talk about it a bit. Not a lot of changes. It's only this text here. So a couple things have changed. N'Golo is now restricted. We saw that in the first game. N'Golo is a really good card. On its own, you can just pull out an N'Golo and you can run turn two, turn three. And that's a really big deal when we're talking about things like SSO, where you have one breaker, it deals with code gates, and it can deal with one of any other cards. It's obviously very expensive, but if that's all you need to get in somewhere, that obviously can win you the game. That's really important. It's a really good card. Also, a big thing about N'Golo, it lets you deal with AI. Uh, Excalibur is super strong in the meta right now, not having a way to deal with it or spending more effort in slots. And like you can, you're starting to see this a bit. We're starting to see the beginning of all these new deck lists in the new meta. Um, and this deck list could probably be fine with, without Film Critic in it. And that's probably a choice. It's like, do you want to play Film Critic? Do you want to play uh, Pawn Shop or do you want to play N'Golo? And that's an interesting uh, decision. But you're seeing things like this. Oh, of course it's not going to load. How did I not learn that by now? Right? Oh, this one's cool. But like... Shapers are spending more <laughs> slots. Like having a four icebreaker rig is something that's very common with N'Golo. This one is using Brahmin, which is a bit trickier, and maybe you're going to see more of that for sure. This kind of fits the same sort of like N'Golo, I can deal with things uh, sort of format. So this is probably the closest to a, a, an N'Golo deck that we've seen. Obviously, uh, there is a downside to Brahmin, but you can get over that largely with three Parisias, let alone David's super sweet value. Um, but shapers have to play more breakers. They're taxed to find more answers more quickly. So the idea that your clone chips and your self-modifying codes are now even more important. You saw in that game, or and I felt like a lot of games before that, I just tuned in, this game's amazing. A lot of the games I played this week, uh, not finding a self-modifying code is a huge issue, let alone not finding two, because you generally need two breakers now to run a remote. You could always fix this by just playing Palangi. I still think Palangi is a problem maybe, uh, uh, but it's a, it's a lot harder for shapers to just like Cabanessa Wu at one breaker and then be good. And that's a really big deal. Where's all this Ika coming from? What changed? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, I haven't seen this much Ika in a while. I think this card is technically okay against Surveyor. 
you can pawn shop it. For Haley, it's a cheap install. I think it's the best thing. But like, I would play Nanotech every day. Nanotech is really good right now. I don't know if I'm missing something. All right, next thing, removed. And it doesn't mean removed from the restricted list, which I thought I did at first read. That actually means removed, removed, as in banned. Hey, what's up? Um, Zealous Judge has been banned. I highly recommend you go to Nisei.net and like read through because they explain a bit what they're talking about. Zealous Judge being removed is a big deal. Um, you'll notice in this list, not a lot of asset spam decks are being hit by this. And I know people don't like asset spam that much. A lot of people don't. And asset spam decks, like these sort of very horizontal decks that don't play the standard ice type game like we've been playing for the last two games, um, haven't been hit very hard for this list. Removing Zealous Judge is a big deal specifically for Gagarin, which is one of the two big Big asset archetypes that I would be worried about competitively right now, as in like they're good decks, you need to be able to deal with them in tournament space. Um, and Zealous Judge means that the hard hitting news play isn't that good anymore. You can just clear the tags with your misdirections if you're still playing Shaper and you're pretty good. There's going to be no more tricks with that. And that's a really big deal because they would hard hitting news you even if you can clear the tags just to res the Zealous and you die. Um, for that reason, CU is now unrestricted. Um, I think. See you as a problem in these sort of decks, uh, in these like Garen decks, because you could see you into Zealous Judge and then you could kill someone out of nowhere. If you don't know what See You is, it's one of the newer cards in the game. It came out in the Rain and Reverie. Uh, this card now, actually, I, I think this card is a legitimate card that could concede play even outside of like asset spam decks. I think this in a remote is like kind of similar as long as the credit differential is there to like scoring a breaking news. I think a single tag is probably more scary now than a hard hitting news. Uh, I would not be surprised if you're seeing a lot more shaper decks that are not playing hard hitting news, maybe playing one or two copies just so you still have to respect it to some extent. But if you're playing against a lot of shapers with misdirections, I've even seen criminals and anarchs playing networking. Uh, it's not that good. It's just like a tempo hit, right? And it taxes out clone chips and SMCs for misdirection, stuff like that. But a single tag, that's really a big deal. And I'm expecting to see more CU, but actually I'm expecting to see way more C source. C source is really strong. There's not many cards that impact single tags that avoid single tags in the in the game. I think it's down to like two or three cards, and some of them are really niche. I think the best one right now is No One Home, and it's not even guaranteed. And with a single tag, you can do some very crazy stuff. It's not like Scorched Earth, but exchange of information is super good. There's a lot of really good decks that are running one pointers, zero pointers, and or three uh, three pointers, and exchanging is so good in yellow when they have things like. You could run fly on the wall, I guess. That's probably good in this archetype, but you could also run things like 15 minutes, quantum kitty, stuff like that. Wayland can play this card really well with things like standoff, let alone hostile takeover. And this wins games. Like runners will spend so much time protecting themselves from being dead and having the eight credits, let alone whatever economic warfare stuff to clear the tag. But if you just see search exchange them, you can win the game so easily. Feed them that food early, right? I think that's crazy. Flip switch doesn't work. It's only on the corpse turn. Yeah. There's very few things that deal with it. It's shocking. It's like Forger, No One Home, that t motorcycle that people jokingly played for a second. It's crazy. It, I, I think C-Source is really good. And let alone C-Source closed accounts exchange is like, again, a dirty play. They have to clear the tag at the end of it. Closed accounts is still a really strong card. Uh, a lot of runners are playing... I don't know. You saw us when we didn't have money, you lose, right? People play remotes. And I really think this like jamming 5-3 things got way better with the new card, Digital Rights Management, which I think might actually be one of the best cards in the whole uh, booster pack. This card is fucking crazy. I'll hopefully see it a bit in a second. I'm running only one copy of my Blue Sun deck, but this card is so good for so many reasons. On the Lamb, yeah. On the Lamb is one of them. Chopbot doesn't do it. It helps you clear that tag later, but after the bad stuff happened. I think Zealous Judge will be looked back in a few years and will wonder why it wasn't always banned. I don't know. Maybe. I think Zealous Judge is an exciting card. I think it's a cool card. I wish it was better. I wish there was like NBN decks that played Zealous Judge in a less like supposedly degenerate way. Because it's like a scary punishment out of nowhere. And then lastly, Lamb has been removed. So the big reason why Lamb's been removed, it's the same thing as Angolo, right? Like Lamb... You get that down, you have the one breaker. There's so many reasons why that's obviously really good. But the biggest reason why this has been a problem is so many people have been playing against Lamb Surfer. It comes out on turn two if you really need to in Cabinet Sabu. And now it feels kind of like Sifr back in the day where what your ice says, the type, the amount of subroutines, none of that shit matters. You pay two credits, you're through. And that means that the counterplay against uh, like Glacier decks, there's not that many things you can do like Border Control, Marcus Batty. All that stuff is really good if you can get it. But like the kind of ice really doesn't matter too much. 
Um, I think server still has a chance to be very problematic against glacier builds. The idea that you can like you can spam a Polongi is pretty trivially in Shaper, let alone you can get infinite Polongi in uh, most freedom decks. Uh, it's not that hard with Friday chip, let alone if you're really committed with like virus breeding grounds. I don't know, contaminate or whatever. Uh, and this still could be a problem, at least it's more clumsy. Uh, but I, I think this was an issue, and I, I've seen players, like even new players, are like, I built my cool Jinteki Glacier thing, and they played server, and none of the ice that I decided to put there mattered. Um, you know, this still is a thing. I'm glad Lamb is gone. I think that's a big reason why also we're playing Blue Sun tonight, because some of the big Blue Sun ice is now harder to deal with. Barriers are now kind of hard to deal with. Paper Barriers got a lot better than they used to be, right? Paperclip is now restricted, and now out of faction, you're not seeing Paperclip a hell of a lot because criminals are struggling to either play a good current or play maybe even in Golo still. That's pretty good in criminal still. And I think there's other, like, Film Critic is still pretty hot in criminal. Uh, Anarchs have good options, and then Shapers now have even, like, more options to consider what to play for a restricted card. So you're seeing less Paperclip. You're seeing less Lamb. So I think the best Barrier Breakers still are probably Probably if not paperclip in shape or like lady is still really good but then you do i feel like clone chips are getting taxed out i don't feel like it's infinite recursion how it used to feel long long time ago um but now barriers got a lot better barriers did just get a lot better people are struggling to deal with barriers like you saw don't play inti it's probably a mistake still a big fan of on the lamb too bad i really now caught on yeah i played on the lamb in uh in uh what's this called uh I did play one on the lamb at Worlds. I played one on the lamb in uh in Geist for a long time. Best barrier breaker is inside job now. Tell me about it, right? Inside job is so good right now. Inside job is super good. Yeah, anyways, overall, what I think about this most wanted list, I think this is cool. I think these are really good changes. Um, uh, I think this helps, and I think this brings down like, Runner a fair bit. It's weird how much of it was just like Bengolo being really strong. Um, I'm still a bit worried about Acid Spam. I think Industrial Genomics low-key might be one of the better decks. I'm also seeing this like very big disparity, and I think Jinja might be, I don't want to say issue, but you see this a lot of the time, where like you see very horizontal decks, like Acid Spam decks, and then you see very vertical decks, Jinja decks, Border Control decks, Outfit decks, all that sort of stuff, like what we played SSO, stuff like that. And both of those need, uh, they need to be dealt with adequately, because they snowball really hard. Like if Industrial Genomics gets off the first two turns, uh, unlike Contest, like it's a problem if SSO gets off if Jinja gets off uncontested like that's a problem and so the question is you really need a deck that deals with both of them um I feel like criminal maybe can do it anarch again it's like seems really draw dependent because you can't tutor a lot of the times so I feel like shaper is just probably really good right now because they have access to three Parisia you can always play cabinets of and find what you need when you need um, so that's the thing. It's like, I think the two competitive archetypes are so different that finding a runner that deals with both of them is going to be like, just play the thing that can get access to all the answers when they can. I would probably figure out how to be better at Shaper, but maybe the Shaper economy isn't even good enough now. I don't know. Um, I really don't want Industrial Genomics to win Worlds. That's what I'm also scared about. I assumed we would see like something being restricted about Industrial Genomics at this point, but, uh, I'm against that. Turning wheel, great for both. Hey, Kat, how's it going? Hey, Kat, actually. Yeah, how is it going? Um... I don't know about that. I don't think that's true, is it? It's way too slow. I don't know. Mash that APOC button. Yeah, I think we talked about Apocalypse before, and Apocalypse is really good against both of them. So that's the best you got. <laughs> that's the best you got. Apocalypse Worlds. Let's go. Apocalypse almost like Apocalypse decks are doing really well. They almost won. Uh, uh, Spags is playing Apocalypse, right? We had a couple Apocalypse up there last year. All right, that's our news. Let's play some Blue Sun. I think this Blue Sun benefits a fair bit from a couple of those changes. Firstly, no lamb within goal restricted, maybe less film critic. Paperclip is rare. All right, I'm going to build this Blue Sun deck. This Blue Sun deck is based off of existing decks. I think I just tweaked some cards. I just want to pull up who originally this deck was attributed to. If I search Riper, I don't, jeez, beans. Huh, beans. Working on my hippo altar for worlds watching stream. Good evening. Oh, no way. Oh, that's awesome. Are you going? Are you sending cards? I do own worlds. Well, now I will have nightmares. Yeah, it could. I, I could see it happening. Yeah, so Rotage has been playing these like hyper modernism s decks. I think it was based off of one of these. Uh, and I changed a couple stuff, a couple new cards. Uh, it has more cards than this, I promise you. Thanks for dropping by, Cat. Um, so this is the version. Uh, I played this before uh, to um, to do some testing. Uh, this version has a couple win conditions. It has good ice. It has 
Uh, Trojan Horse, which I thought was a really strong card, and I'm struggling to use it. I think it is possible and has Arc Lockdown. I think you can only play one of these in Consulting Visit for the Arc Lockdown. I think that's really cool that you can either, if you have Arc Lockdown in hand or Trojan Horse in hand, you can do Trojan Horse Consulting Arc Lockdown. And against a lot of the Shaper decks that were just playing like a single Lamb or maybe two Lambs or an Angolo, you could win off of that. You do have the Punitive, you do have Good Ice, and uh, that's pretty good. Now, the version I play is slightly different than this. I'll show you in a second. I'm going, are you? I'm afraid I'm not. Uh, it's a bit pricey, but I'm really excited to watch it. Uh, again, there's a tournament this weekend and next that will be showing maybe a bit of the meta, so maybe we'll know. I'm also worried that people won't show their secret tech because it's too close to Worlds and they don't want to spoil it because, I don't know, maybe it's a bigger thing. I don't know. Are you selling all your stuff, Cat, at Worlds? Or is it just Hippo stuff? I imagine you're taking a lot of stuff, right? Two years ago, there was a lot of PU. There was. PU got banned, right? Yeah, PU almost won too. Uh, I don't think we just do the straight in JNet, right? Yeah, we don't need to go here. Where are we? We're here. Okay, let's build this. Uh, new Corp deck. Uh, oh, I'm not gonna call it New Sun. Chat, give us a better name before we before we have to hit that submit button. Will you do or do you know anyone who will stream on Saturday and next weekend? I don't have confirmation about that. I know I was in conversations about it. I haven't had anything confirmed, uh, but I'll let you know as soon as I find out about that. I don't know if there's a stream this weekend. I assume there might be. I, I think uh, Nisei is going to stream everything they can. Oh, this is actually much harder. Oh, because I'm typing down there. Okay, reduce service, a really good new card for Blue Sun. You can bounce this if you want. Uh, that's really strong. Yeah, you bounce it for zero. You have to repay for it, but it's good. You can protect your centrals. You generally want to protect your centrals. Blue per modern is... <laughs> oh, I'll spell blue per different. Selling all my old stuff, a new Kanga Mato, David Raven, and Hippo. Ooh, if I finish this in time. Super cool. Raven's hot. Rip ripe and good time. I like that. I don't know if I said, hey, Gullet. I need to see a list to come up with a good name. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I don't know how many mouse lists we'll put at two. Wow, sorry, this is not the most exciting way to see a deck list, but I think this gives us time to talk about all the inclusions. Overstate AI, it's a three of, it's so good. If you get this up early, it's really good money. Again, if more people are playing David, a bit dodgier, but you can ice it if you want. Uh, Agenda Suite, we're running three pointers because we're a punitive deck. We're on three SDS drone deployment. The Agenda Suite here is actually interesting and we can talk about this in a second once I show you what all of it is. SSL, we're doing two of them. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, we have two Orion, because Orion is a good target for Oversight Eye in the early game, let alone building blocks. I think we have three Surveyor, because Surveyor is a really good card. Um, it's just really good. I think we have three Chiyashi. That's another big barrier. You want big barriers because they're hard to deal with. I think big code gates are good too, but it's one of the most expensive ice in the game, and it gives you that building blocks value. Uh, this deck list is on two daily quests, and this is a weird conversation. I've seen people ask about this comments online, whether this would be better off as an Adonis campaign. For what it's worth, Daily Quests has the same trash cost while not installed, but cheaper when it is installed. You res it for one, they know it's there in the remote so they don't run, which is a bummer, or they do run, which is okay, I guess, and then you can get the three credits and then bounce it. The three credit return is the same as Adonis Campaign. The problem with Adonis Campaign is you have to bounce it back in the hand in three turns. The question is, how long is this lasting in the remote or more than three turns, and I don't know. I honestly feel like there's a chance that this daily quest might be better as two Adonises, and then you have two more influence for either better ice or some cool tricks. I don't know, but I'm not convinced about this card. That's all I can say. Afshar is good. I don't know if there's one or two. I'll put one. Uh, Hedge Fund is a good card. Uh, Punitive is how we win. I think there's three, but there honestly might be two. Building blocks, this is interesting, and I saw this on a deck list online. Uh, the problem why I did, I used to play a shit ton of Blue Sun, as long as this channel went, uh, has gone on. I think some of the first games might be Blue Sun on here. But I was really frustrated with Blue Sun recently, because I was drawing these really bad bricked hands, where I would draw like two building blocks, no barriers, and an overstate AI, and I couldn't do anything for a couple turns. And I like this change that somebody made where they only put two blue, uh, building blocks in it. It's obviously a good card, and I didn't realize this card installs ignoring all costs, which is really sweet, considering you will have a big survey a server but the fact they only run two of it it's less of a good econ card uh, but there's less chance you're gonna draw a clumsy hand and I appreciate that a fair bit I think that's actually really cool uh, we're running Rashida we have two hostile takeover we're weak to a uh, turntable but oh that's not the right one but you need to score seven points somehow again play C source exchange am I right we have a single consulting visit this is a really flexible card Actually, I don't think there's that many options in this deck with this consulting visit, but it's another, uh, what's it called? Oh, I think we actually have three Mouse Lie. 
SSL, ooh, new card. I wish I could play more of these. I think we could maybe get away with two if we did the daily quest change, but this card is so good. This card is amazing. It lets you find a 5-3 from your deck. It lets you install a double advance and still score a next turn. It lets you do some cool things when you pull also hostile takeover to hand and then you jam something in the remote and they have to run it if they're on a clot deck. I think that's really cool. I've been a bit uh, negative about Netrunner without Jackson Howard, without a lot of like really strong neutral-esque draw effects, how a lot of times you're playing what you draw as opposed to like making plays in the future when you're playing on the corp and the fact that we now have a really cool fast track for five three decks means you're now controlling the game a bit more and i think that's super important for corpse really excited about this card i think it's dope this says chrysium grid uh, originally i think the deck list i saw had two of these i had to cut something because i wanted to try new cards the chrysium grid has been so good uh every time i've played it i would consider finding the slots for more of these what are we at 44 okay and we have a city works project and this is weird. And I think now with DRM, you can start doing this, where you can start inventing weird agenda suites. It's not very obvious whether SSL endorsement with its extra credits is better for Punitive or City Works Project, which is a really good card when it's in a remote server, but it's bad on Centrals because it has no ability. It doesn't give you nine credits. So what I decided to do is play one City Works and then have the DRM so that if I need to draw, jam the City Works and advance advance it to get it to that four meat damage so that you can Punitive so easily, I like this combination that this opens up the agenda suite. You can start doing weird things where if the runner has a lot of money, maybe you could play a single copy of like uh, that risky investment card like you can do cool shit with this there's also a bunch of like five threes that are one ofs in the deck that you could pull out and jam early game to get the tempo if you're like really nutty but i like the idea that you can do this where you have this one really cool drm play for a very punitive safe play but you don't have to run three copies of this because this thing sucks in centrals i think that's cool this only runs two ipo seems weird but money's not been a problem he says confidently And then last two cards, we have one Archive Memories, very flexible, uh, gets you back a lot of things. Uh, Chrysium getting back this fine reduced service, I uh, oversight, DRM, all this stuff is pretty good. And then the last card, we have a preemptive because it's fine. And I like this deck list a lot. Jump back. <laughs> hey, Ajar, how's it going? Ajar, maybe? Winnipeg Regionals will be streaming this weekend on Winnipeg Netrunner. Fuck yeah. Do you know what time? Winnipeg Regionals, check it out. Winnipeg Netrunner. Jackson Howard praise. Yeah, it's very Jackson Howardy. It totally is. Digital rights management is a stupid good cat. I, I'm so excited for this card. It's such a big deal. Don't surf on Blue Sun. Sunstroke guaranteed. Ooh, I like Sunstroke. Then Blue Sun bounce and DRM again. How's it going, Chris? DRM or Coco dedication to Alice and Titan seems good. You can't do that. DRM specifically says you can't score agendas for the remainder of his turn. So there's no fast defense nonsense with this besides using it as a fast track, which it's like a fast track with an install. But yeah, you can't do that. It would be busted if you could. I'm dying. Okay, rip riping. Okay, that's at least uh, that's at least honoring where this deck came from. I think we have no. I don't think we have a restricted card in here. Also, if you can put an Excalibur in any deck that has border control, I feel like we should have an Excalibur in here somewhere. We don't, but um, you could fix that. Yeah, the DRM's got all the art on this, uh, on the new cards have been really good. Stream starts at noon central or 1 p.m. Eastern. That is, is that Saturday or Sunday? This weekend. Excal Blue Sun seems good. Yeah, Excal's good. Excal's really, really good. Just DRM for the second research grant. Ooh! I think like DRM with Lakshmi is like legitimate too, right? DRM for Lakshmi. It's so good. Ripping is ironic because the deck has DRM. <laughs> Saturday. Okay. Saturday, 1 p.m. Winnipeg Regionals. Is it winter in Winnipeg yet? I imagine it's always winter in Winnipeg. That's Canadian ignorance, right? It's got much better with Angola Lamb gone. Yeah, totally. Also, with Angola and Lamb gone. Oh my god, you can play Acme again! And I fucking love playing Acme! And then it's like, against any good Leela deck that has Angola, you lost. Because Acme had that benefit, where it's like, oh, Universal Connectivity Fee will ruin you. It's game-winning. And if they have a, a, an AI to deal with it, you have three copies of, uh, of IP Block, which is like, so boosted in that deck. And now, eh, Acme! And that's really good. <laughs> Acme is really cool. I do like Acme. Got a new alt art for it. 
Also, talk about like good alt arts. Uh, the GNK kit, we had it, we played with it. Um, Rust Riders. Uh, we played with it uh, yesterday, and the alt arts are really good. There's a Nisei. Uh, I got, uh, what's it called, RP. And on top of that, best of luck, have fun. This might be Apocalypse, which could be an issue. At least we have the early Orion. And then you could honestly leave the early Orion up just so they can't DDoS you. I think that's fair. And we have Border Control for Central as well. Um, yeah, the art's really good. I like the 419. I have this World's 419 that's gold plated from uh, King of Servers last year that I think I'm gonna hold on to. But um, it has like it's on I think Elizabeth Mills desk and like the the HQ fucking what's it called the HQ interface is there. Uh, it's really cool. It's really 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 cool. 419 Kitty. I think it's a dog, Maddie. I think it's actually the it's the HQ interface. Like it's like a like a jackal. I think. Pyro, how's it going? Angolo isn't quite gone. It's only restricted. It is. And so we're going to see if you see a lot of it. The question is whether it's good enough. And at least you can diversify that deck. Because that deck also, Film Critic is a bit of an issue. I don't know. All right, if we play this, we have no money. But at least we can't get Apocalypse on turn one. Do we put this on an HQ? Yeah. Okay. I'll we'll put this on R&D. I'm really worried about Apocalypse. If Blue Sun gets Apocalypsed, you lose, so, because you lose all your money invested. So, we honestly might want to leave this on the table. It's obviously pretty awkward here, because we have no money. Nothing told us about what this deck is, so we are going to bounce it. We do have border control. Oh, that's a bit weird. Oh, that's really good. We need to protect it, though, so they don't David it, so I'm going to put the mouseless in front of it. Sometimes it looks like an aft share. It's good enough. Uh, that is one, two, three. That's our turn. And this is when we have punitive, like this is the point where you can run more copies of CityWorks project. Obviously if they imp it, it's like mediocre. They at least don't die to punitive. Um, you're off to the races. So this is why we're like, you just DRM jam naked. I looked away for like a thousand seconds we abandoned Cyber Trooper. Unfortunately, uh, Corey, uh, there's problems with JNet right now where I can't just trash programs. So it's it's honestly unplayable. Cat, are you going to Nats? No, I'm not going to Canadian Nats, uh, but more likely to end up. Yeah, it's an Apocalypse deck with Glut Cipher. This is the old deck list of the week, probably, and they have the DDoS. So there's a chance we just leave this online. We also want to triple advance a Horde. We don't have Horde in our deck, but we have Border Control. So what's the chance we leave this Orion up? <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> Glut Cipher, huh? Uh, more likely, if anything, I think the big tournament we'll try and go to is the one in Philly in December. Do we bounce this? I think we do. The border control only gets so far. and We can make it really expensive for them. In theory, this is good. Like, against DDoS, that's a really good ice. We have double punitive. We can just do install advance advance. They could try and punitive us. They both need a program, and if they have the program, we can kill them, maybe. Uh, the problem is, like, they do a lot of times have I've had worse. In fact, we know they have an I've had worse, so the double punitive play is kind of bad. So at least if we put an ice down. Uh, oh, fuck, we need to put an ice in front of R&D so they don't DDoS and we just die. So we'll, we'll find some ice. Oh, that's really good ice, actually. And they also have Wanton, so I kind of like this play. Yeah, the Pax Unplugged one, yeah, that seems more likely. Seems much more likely. At least like a lot of people in my meta have been more interested in that. I've not been to Philly. Does this play Trojan Horse? No, this one doesn't. And I don't know if I love Trojan Horse too much. Oh, also they had Earthrise. Yeah, going for the punitive play there was probably a terrible idea. Gotta pay more attention. I'll take notes. Okay, Black Orchestra in the bin. That matters. Okay. I'm very close to jamming a naked agenda. You don't play this naked, then they run it for magnum opus. All right, Earthrise is over. They have five credits, plus eight, plus four next turn. Triple punitive is possible. Hostile is, uh, Hacktivist is fine. We need a single ice, so they DDoS into this. Double ice on the remote would be good, but like largely against Apocalypse deck, you want to play it slow. In an Apocalypse deck, you'd actually play reduced service on R&D. Like, you would play reduced service on a central, just to say, like, fuck off, pay 8 credits. I don't want to install advance, advance here. I'll wait. We honestly can install this naked, and they could run it. 
Next turn, they'll have a fair bit of money, though. They are catching up. Well, I think we honestly do play slow. I don't know. Maybe it's not right. Endorse jamming it? It's super risky. We'll see. Like, they need to get poor. If they throw out a uh, MK Ultra, it's a lot worse, because then they have something to install in trash here. I'm assuming they will DDoS it. They're definitely on 3 DDoS. Glot Cypher Fun is worth. It's actually pretty good against the Punitive. And this on the inside isn't amazing. We could triple advance this, but it's, it's pretty shitty. Three Punitive in hand. Yeah, tell me about it. Stimhack, Black Orchestra getting thrown out. Okay. Okay, I think we'll, we'll push it now. Again, we have NGO fronts in the deck. So they might not run this. They toss an MK, you just don't res. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. I think they DDoS anyways, right? Here, this seems really bad. They have an iPad worse, and their money is actually pretty good. I think the biggest issue, though, is that this is protectable. Ooh, they just played iPad worse. Oh, they played a paperclip too. Oh, they have all of it. So we res here for five. Then they actually pay their bad pub, and then we can bounce it. They're not using the DDoS. We can just bounce this. So it feels like it works more in their favor than yours. I think you're right. For what it's worth, we could boost like all their money here. Obviously that's bad, but at least they're gonna spend three credits with the bad pub. They play perfectly around this SDS. Yeah, we should have gone a turn before. We got a fair bit more money by then. So we need about 30 credits to ensure the kill. So we just have to have one punitive. If it hits, we're good. So we're gonna bounce this for money. Okay. So we'll do one here. So we have to spend uh, five plus 16. So if we spend 11. Nice try. I've had worse one time. All right, we win. Okay. Oh, they had it in there. Hey, good game. Yeah, those aren't the worst odds. So they had it in there. So we had like what? 60% chance of hitting? 40%? Those numbers should be more obvious to us. But that was pretty good. We had triple punitive. Uh, and for what it's worth, we could have done the math. No, because if we hit the iPad words, we couldn't have landed three punitives, right? Could have put down the Stargate. I don't know what you mean. Maybe we should have done that. For pressure? It still costs four. Oh, installed it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's the, kind of the thing with I've had words. You want as few cards in your hand as long as you're not under three. So like installing the Stargate, which was the only playable in their hand, honestly, it made it a 75% chance of survival as opposed to 60. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thanks for the game. You were saying, seeing that a lot more back in the day where people used to play a traffic accident to like weaken uh, Anarchs before they scorched earth them. That's cool. But they played that relatively well. I don't know. We were technically favored. By the way, what's up? It's the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre, for those who don't know. Uh, maybe you're new here. Maybe you're new to the Netrunner. I've actually been hearing a fair bit of people. Um, on that note, like the numbers have been really good. I don't generally uh, say for the channel, like, hey, subscribe or follow any of that stuff. It's actually kind of good for me <laughs> if you do do that because it recommends it higher on 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 YouTube. On, on Twitch, you kind of, if you just hit that follow button, it just kind of gives you an update when I go live. And I do stream at not regular hours sometimes. So if you do that, that's good. You also, if I put out videos, you know, it's cool stuff. I think they could have let you have the agenda. Yeah, there's no reason to not let us have the agenda. There's literally no reason. Like, we still have to play kind of conservatively. What does a splash game look like? We just showed it. Oh. Come! It's happening! All right, this opening hand has a hostile. Double O AI. I think we honestly keep this. Thanks, you too. All right, so we've been hearing about Khan all day. This is Khan over here. Uh, 12 influence, no link. Not a great ability. I think we keep this hand just because we have F-Share for HQ so we don't get siphoned and we can look to draw to OAI. We install credit credit, we can IPO out of this. This is not the best hand. It's honestly not the worst. 
Paul, yeah, this is exactly for you. You can see how the con works. I'm assuming we're seeing a Cyber Trooper Telote, which is still really bad. For what it's worth, con is kind of scary against Blue Sun, because if she derezzes our big-ass ice that we spend 15 credits on, fuck me, it's bad. Now, we could rush the daily quest, but let's not. I just don't want to get diversion, let alone embezzled, so we're just going to ice and double credit, and next time we can do, like, credit IPO, maybe install. Did you just go full Shannon for a second? I don't actually know. I'm not sure what I did. That could be Shatner-esque. I also don't know Shatner too well. Uh, the school I went to here has a building that was called by so many people the Shatner Building. I don't know if it was officially called the Shatner Building because Shatner was an alum uh, at the school I went to, at least for some extent. Uh, and people wanted it. like They like petitioned to call Shatner the building after Shatner. I don't think Shatner ever donated money, though. So the school was like kind of against it. At least that's my remembering of the story. Ever wonder what Neverner would have been like with Arkham Mulligan rules? It'd be cool. I think it'd be you'd see more snowballing, right? Like you'd see more absurd shit. Arkham rules are really fun though for Arkham. All right, they have a fair bit of money. They know what we're drawing. Oh, it's a good card though. It's a good card. They can't break that, right? We could do it on a remote and daily quest it. I don't know why R&D would be an issue, but I, I think we can kind of go slow. We have two overset AIs. No, oh, I've played this card before, I swear. I've done this one before. I've, uh... <laughs> oh, I can drag this one. That's a relief. <laughs> For those who don't know, Arkham, uh, the Arkham rules are when you draw your opening hand, uh, you, well, let's ignore weaknesses. You can mulligan cards selectively. You have to do them all at once, though. But those cards don't get shuffled in when you draw. So the idea is, like, you draw five cards, you don't like these three, you put them aside, draw three more, then shuffle them back. It's very generous. What are the Arkham mulligan rules? I don't know. Yeah, those are what those are. Uh, we're going to go for the Afshar here. Resin here is kind of bad because they know what it is. But uh, I don't want to lose the hostile, let alone this. So we're going to do it. They also lose two credits. So like in Hearthstone, Hearthstone though, Wendigon, you have a chance of drawing the cards you shuffled back in if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, Shiv, cool. So they're gonna really struggle to deal with the Chiashi. Seems like they're doing Cyber Trooper Talit with these. I don't know if they're gonna have two Link. Cyber Trooper gives you one, which is a good start. I don't know what else they play in Faction to give a Link. Maybe Sports Hopper? I don't know. We're not gonna score the Hostel. I think we're just gonna keep going. For what it's worth, Hearthstone has more single-player content coming out really soon, and the single-player content in Hearthstone is, like, really good. You can play with, like, it doesn't matter if you don't have a collection, so you can pick it up and play it, and it's really fun. Oh, okay, there you go. So that's their Link card. This card doesn't do much on its own, but it does give you a Link and an MU for two credits. It's actually a steal. Honestly, yeah, we probably bounce this. I don't think they're on birds anymore. Double Afshar, that's actually really good to have two of the same type because it does tax out these breakers. Uh, crowbar is the one that they're missing. I think we'll just get this going. You have to pre-res it, which is good against Falsified, but that's a risk. I do far worse than kill you. I've hurt you and I tend to go on hurting. What? what are you? What are you doing? You got to play around that fairy Polongi combo. Yo, boosted strength fairy. We haven't seen the Tillut yet. Their economies, they played like, what, two gambles? Yeah, I don't know where their economy is going to be. Same old thing for what? Our economy is good. And the punitive will probably be pretty good. Again, if they do have the sports hopper, I think we're just going to jam this. It's really hard for them to face check now because their breakers are so terrible against big strength eyes. Oh, it's a Shatner thing. Okay. Like L5R. I still haven't played L5R. Also, if you play Arkham Horror, there was an announcement today. Uh, the new uh, cycle is actually shipping now, so you should see it relatively soon. But they showed uh, cats. They added like four cats to the game. So excited. This is a restricted card too, mind you, so they're not on levy or anything. So they're going to have a limited amount of breakers. That's really exciting for us. We do have the punitive. We can draw once. I don't think we're really in a rush. I think we want another punitive here. Uh, you can't with zero cost. You can't play, uh, what's it called? But with one costers, there's a chance that they're on Hushuk. And if they're playing the same old thing, it's likely they're on some big run, like right, Hushuk or whatever. They have Link. This card's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. We'll draw once for, uh, yeah, whatever. We don't need the money. <laughs> e, let's play. I'm really excited. 
I'm low key tempted to low key tempted to do altered Arkham cats. Holy shit, it would be nuts. It would be so good, cat. Those the art on those cats is like really solid too. We have time to trash the pad tab. Their economy is not good. Unfortunately, yeah, there is a sports hopper. Wow, they actually do have punitive tech. It might be hard to punitive them. We probably have to score out or at least like value punitive them. Uh, so oh, we have it. Okay, so we can probably just jam. Maybe they use their sports hopper in something else, but we need one more ice. Uh, we're definitely going to trash this for three. That's not really a dent to us. We can draw once. We want another piece of ice for here. Reduce service is pretty sweet. Uh, they could run archives to pop it, but I think we actually pre install this. I don't think we need more money. They could, in theory, falsify this, whatever. Uh, it's fine. And, like, that's the problem with Khan. Like, Khan just literally can't interact with us, they have no ability to run. Hard-hitting news is a problem, sea source is a problem, every single piece of ice is a problem. Like their ability, it's turn seven, their ability hasn't fired once. Feels so bad. I like to see Dan B's altar chickens. I don't even know what that means. Arkham should have more alt art. Arkham also should celebrate the art more. I wish Arkham Horror gave you access to all the art images because the art on the cards is so good, but it's so small and some players don't even read it. You just read them the card and they don't look it. I want to project it on the wall where we play. So when you walk into a location, you could be like, that's what it looks like. You see all the spooky, cool world building, but they don't do it. They won't give me all that art. And now they're selling like the prints themselves. Eh. Like we don't have to do anything fast. Oh, that's so good. They'll probably inside job this. So then the second one might be a problem. So we're going to jam next turn. I think IPO is a bit better than hedge fund. Zach, how's it going? You may be able to outlast them potentially since they won't have levy for their breakers. So I'm wondering if they have another set of breakers to complement those B and E's. They might have like just backup one ofs. They could also be on like uh, I think I saw Dan playing in his Geist like one copy of that really slow Anarch recursion card, the vampire one trope. But again, yeah, we can outlast that too. I'm pretty sure. I just don't know how to get into the server, so. Uh, hopefully we top deck an agenda. We don't, so we're going to DRM it. DRM's so good. Oh, fuck. I was meant to bounce this. I forgot. Whoops. Uh, I'm going to go for the drone deployment. Actually, it's not very good again. I think we'd just go for the uh, city works. No, I'll go for the SSL. I feel, feel like we're pretty safe. Yeah, obviously we were meant to bounce this. Getting a trash is stupid. It's really stupid. We fucked that up really bad. I wasn't paying attention. You bounce out at the beginning of the turn, you get four credits, and it's back in hand. We revealed an SSL. We've jammed a card. Does all those chicken IDs for Neverner. I think you should make the cats into chickens. I don't think I've seen those. Dan B does Neverner alter it, so the runners are chickens. Okay, I don't think I've seen that. Blue Mercury. Blue HG does Arkham Alts, but I find it less exciting to draw magnifying glasses versus cyberpunk hippos. There's some cool art. There's some really cool art in, in, uh, in Arkham. Uh, yeah, those are some cool characters. I agree with you. Cyberpunk is kind of a big deal. I'd be so interested to see if they made an expansion. I don't think they will, but if you made Arkham uh, like in the 80s or like modernly or whatever, what that would look like. Oh, they okay. So they have a Begalter. Oh, we didn't even re res or reduce service. We were just goofing it up all over the spot. Okay, wait. We got to focus a bit. I think just because I don't know. All right. We're on game point. Uh, don't need the hedge fund. Can't drag it, so we'll learn. Maybe not resing this as the key play. Like, they don't even have enough money to attempt a run on this server if we res this. I literally don't think they're going to interact with us once. They've made, what, two runs on R&D? And then it got hit by this. For what it's worth, hit, trashing the Rashida was actually pretty sweet. And they're, like, struggling to fire their tech trader, right? Because they can't even run. Five Strength is getting to the point where they can run. They actually could make a run on HQ. They don't know that. We could put a reduced service on HQ and just res it and be like, fuck you. And then once they have what they need for this remote, we can in theory res uh, or do service. I wonder if they also... Uh, I can't get any fast. Ah, GG. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's it. Like, ah, that's why I'm so worried about Khan. There's just so many things. I don't know. Hey, you too. They just couldn't play the game in Netrunner. That's a problem. Because like people are going still going pretty fast. Also, I'm not going to open that YouTube video right now. I think someone sent me a deck list last week and I opened it and I went away from it. We didn't look at it. Apologies. I don't know if that person's seeing this or hearing this. Somebody sent like a pollen a deck and like we never looked at it. Consulting into archive into DRM to get the agenda. 
It's a possibility, but I kind of wanted the consulting just to keep another punitive. Like, I don't think we needed to... Uh, yeah, actually, I think you're right. Uh, at that point, though, you're spending your whole turn. You might as well just draw three times. Like, it's not that much worse than drawing three times. Why worry about Khan? Just don't play it. Oh, no, it's because it's people were asking earlier today, like, to play Khan or to make it work. We got a lot of that yesterday, or last week, sorry, because of Cyber Trooper Talit. Specifically, uh, Paul in chat has to play Khan at a like a, a random ID tournament, which I think is a really fun tournament. Which like in that tournament, you'll probably be better off because there's less like 100% competitive decks. Like your Khan is probably going to be really fun. I have no doubt it's going to be fun. You're going to be making cool plays. But um, so, uh, yeah, Steam Hack and Defem is cool in Khan. It's cool. Don't play Diana's Hunt. That can't be good. Compile is good, ish. I would love to see a Diesel Punk theme in a card game. Diesel Punk is like what? Like greasers? Yo, that's a splash screen. Um, no. Thirteen games online. We could dive competitive. No, we can't dive competitive. In competitive, they're actually playing casual. There was a whole lobby for casual. I know that's a format. It's also worth saying. Um, uh, for uh, Nisei, there was no changes to any other format. This is only for constructed, like standard. I guess that's what it's called. Catch on, there's always Lace Runner. Yo, do anybody know about Lace Runner? This is like really old. I think you have to be been playing Netrunner for a pretty long time to see this. And Lace Runner is like legitimately pretty sweet. So Kill Screen? Kill Screen and also like Vice Waypoint wrote a couple articles about Netrunner, but somebody made I don't know who this is. This might actually be somebody. But somebody basically made a Netrunner variant. Uh, some of the cards, I think all the cards are just reprints, but with different, like, uh, it's cool how certain mechanics got translated into, uh, what even this is, is this area? Victorian? French Revolution? Sort of, sort of area? It's This is pretty sweet. Check this out. But, like, they have a lot of the cards, like, uh, Mathieu Quang is uh, the first time you make a successful appearance at the offices each season, gain to whatever their coin value is. This is super nuts. Like, that's Gabriel Santiago. It's really cool. A lot of efforts went into this. I forget the name of this painting. Um, add one card or up to two plot cards from di into from your disappointments into your inspiration. Your hands your inspiration. Your heap is your disappointments. There's some really cool theming in it. Oh, hey, Chris. Leela. Okay. Anyways, this shit's awesome. Thanks for uh, Kat, for pointing that out. It's been a minute since I've seen that. I don't know. They attach the word punk to the end of everything. Just so many punks. There's a lot of punks. Steampunk, diesel punk, solar punk, sea punk. Uh, hey, thanks. You too. All right. We're against Leela. HQ pressure. I assume in bezels. There's a really cool Leela list that I saw online. Um, <laughs> might be that. It's, it's, if they play, uh, what's it called? Blue diesel. Blueberry Diesel, I'd consume it. This hand's kind of clumsy. We have border control for HQ, which is okay, but we can't play double Chiashi. We have five cards that combo with the Chiashi would be pretty sweet. Let's try and high roll this. I don't regret it entirely. I'm starting to regret it a bit more. We want to ice at all essentials. Uh, Surveyor, at least we can trace into to dodge. No, the other hand was better. Blueberry Diesel Punk. Sure gamble, that's a career fair, that's a class act. That's an Aesop's pawn shop. Okay, don't know what this is. That's a restricted card. What are they pawning? What are they pawning? Are we seeing cash in Leela? What is this? Is this Eliza deck? They're gonna draw five cards here. They didn't draw. They can put one in the bottom class act, mind you. A hell of a card. Probably the best card in uh that whole cycle. Says me. What is right? That's wild. Okay. I honestly think we might just daily quest into um and mouseless, I think they're gonna set up. If they inside job it, it's a bit of a. Wait, no, this is better. Oh fuck! They bounce. Ah, oh, ah, oh, piss! It's Leela. What are we doing? What are we doing? They just drew five cards. We're gonna get siphoned. Oh no! Fuck me. We had Chrysium. Oh shit! I regret that immediately. Is he diversion us again? 
Ah, oh, f- fuck me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> totally forgot. Rookie mistake. Yeah, I was not paying attention. I was like, let's do this. Like, oh, no, change jam. This shit, this shit's good. Ah, oh, god damn it. We're behind in credits in a punitive deck. Uh, HQ. I'm going to play slow. I'm just going to play slow. Because they seem to be playing a slower deck. Because they don't have any, like, what? What? what's good with this? Harbinger? Okay. So we need ice up all centrals. We don't have any AI hate in this deck whatsoever, but like it's very easy for us to get ice on all centrals, and Hordem's perfect for it. If uh, I don't know, I'm actually pretty worried. I think we I think we 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 cocked it up a wee bit. We we definitely goofed it. Just luring them in <laughs> long con. Yeah, yeah. And now you ran. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, Amaku is actually kind of really shit against Blue Sun. It's hard to get like value runs. They generally have good ice on everything. DJ finish for the Haley. Oh, we're off. We're getting double installs for days. Uh, for what it's worth, Harbinger is a bit awkward with with you know that one, but I'm gonna keep clicking too. Uh, uh, the cool thing about Amakua is that we can get a building blocks or more accurately an overstay AI off really easily. Chris is a super creative deck builder. I'm loving this. I think we played against Chris a fair bit recently. Okay, Patap has to go. That's a cool double install from Leela, uh, from Hey uh, from Hey Hey Leela. We do have the building blocks, nothing to combo with it. We're definitely going to go trash this. This card also fires when we blue sun ability, which is like hella rough. Uh, 14 credits, two cards in hand. I think we actually could consider jamming this. Uh, Surveyor is not that good. They have two rank. We res for five. They pay one to trash two. It's a weird deck you have there. Um, I think we could just put this on HQ and credit credit. Single credit, excuse me. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm excited to see where this goes. Leela's ability is pretty okay. I do miss playing 419 all the time, though. That's what I've been realizing when I play Shaper. You can install whatever you want anywhere. That sucks for me. Fuck. F -f Double fuck. Ooh, and they installed another class act, trashing the last one. Gets that four card draw. We're not going to fuck this one up again. Uh... We can't afford to trash these. I think we have to let it fire at least once. The thing is, like, if we trash both of these, maybe we trash just one. We can't res our central ice. This is really bad. We have a really bad opening. Did you talk about the moon most one list? Yes, we did. Generally, I'm very positive about it. It's good. This is a bad opening. We didn't overset AI anything or building blocks anything. Let's check the VOD. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it for a bit. For what it's worth, it was after we played all the Leela decks. Uh, we could res this so they can't bounce it. Not that concerned about it. So they're going to trash this for free with the Paragon trigger. Uh, luckily, they're not going to get a Namakua counter. But that eats uh, inside job. I'd rather them inside job that than anything else. Uh, this SDS is actually pretty okay. Because the trashes, never mind, they have a Croder. They have a Namina. Ooh, actually, that's a problem for us. That's a really big problem. We need to trash that Amina. They're at only two credits. We can install double. I think we need to install double, but then we're going to get like wrecked on HQ. We have so many agendas and no way to bury these. Uh, we had a really bad opening. Building blocks is useless. Uh, we can install double this, and if they steal it, we punitive to them. I guess that's okay. The problem is here, they probably just run HQ and then hit an agenda and bounce this. Like, our HQ is so bad. What's your general advice for playing Blue Sun? Is oversetting building blocks really that much value? It feels so wonky. I've honestly, this is the worst draw I've had in a long time with it. I think it's still really good. I think building blocks is just an okay card on its own, even if you're not Blue Sun. Okay at best. Overset AI is insane. It's, it's crazy. They pawned the Amakua. That makes a lot of sense. I forgot they could pawn stuff. Class out getting that double draw. Looking for another inside job. Again, this is four meat damage if they want to hit this up, which there's the bulk altar coming down. There's the harbinger for the double install. I don't think they're going to push for it on two credits. And that's the bad part about this card. If we score it, it's not very good for us. It puts us on game point. They have to run everything else. And there's the daily cast. So I don't think we're going to score this one. For, they can't bounce this one, actually. I'm wrong. This is a res card. Yeah, they can't bounce City Works. Yeah, you're totally right. Trojan Horse now, we don't have it. So if we don't ever gain credits from card abilities, pad tap does nothing. Counterplay. What are your thoughts on the Highlander style cards? Winnegon, are you talking about uh, Hearthstone? Or Arkham? Because I don't think there's never a Highlander, is there? 
Just advance and leave it. Yeah, we could have advanced it twice more for sure. But I think like we need a bit more money. That's a third harbinger. And the cash comes with it. Extra value. Something like that would never work in Yeah, it would actually. I, I was you can play you can play it. Um in Hearthstone, I don't play really competitively. I think uh the the genie is really cool. Fuck. I think a genie's super cool. I think that I think they're fun. I'm glad they're like somewhat competitive. This is so bad. Oh, this is so terrible. Building blocks better than their AI. And if anybody tells me to play secure and protect, I will not listen to them. All right, here we go. Here we fucking go. That's a garbage surveyor. They break it for one credit. At least we can lose in one turn. If you don't res, they can't over city I. Or I mean, emergency shutdown, trash and crisium. Play security and protect Corey. We talked about this. There's the doof. This honestly is gonna miss. This is gonna hit zero cards. They're gonna call operation. And hit the one card we can play. Cause we're gonna top deck. F fuck, we didn't. Meh. Meh. None of our cards are good. Go ahead and bounce. None of our cards are good. This is fine. Oh, you bounce the surveyor. Don't mind me. I'll play the surveyor. Now they have to run every single thing. I wonder if they're going to keep a cash around just to play around SDS. In theory, they should, because losing any of these other breakers seems kind of bad. It looks like they're going to. Good for them. I think playing Netrunner Highlander is actually totally possible. You'd have to look at the agenda suite. It's almost definitely possible. There's a lot of neutral agendas. Uh, yeah. Oh, they have a turning wheel. Okay, so this is more problematic. No agendas in here. Yeah, it's just a hostel. Just a hot. We didn't need it. We didn't need it. Doesn't help us score. Ooh, bouncing that. Well, now I can put on an HQ. Joke's on you. They're just making us stronger. Oh, you got a turning wheel counterplay. Ooh, building blocks. Playable. Do we click? Two diversions are out. We can start clicking for credits. It's not terrible, right? Don't know. Do you know how you win this matchup? This is the sort of matchup that you win by playing Excalibur in your deck, which we should be doing, and you just border control them. Because I don't think they're going to have a way to deal with it because they're not into Amakua. For what it's worth, Amakua right now is like totally playable because our central suck ass. We can't even res this. This thing's a liability. But uh, you hear me? Like, just Amakua it. I don't know what to do here. Because we need our money cards to be able to play the game in Netrunner. There's no way the consulting visit matters. We, we Yeah, I'm going to throw the consulting visit. The chance of us punitive them it seems like really low. They have a lot of money. What does Highlander mean? Yeah, it's uh, it's like EDH in, in Magic, uh, which means you can only play one of each card. Yeah. So one of us. Scry, how's it going? This is my Lily list. Chris and I have been workshopping recently. Oh, super cool. I was really excited when they played that turn one. Getting that Paragon Valley, hitting the IPO. Let's see that second embezzle. They're on two embezzle, two, three diversion, two inside job, I'm assuming. There's no agendas in here. Nice try. Just IPOs. Uh oh, turning wheel. What are you doing? Just building blocks. No agendas. Run R&D. We have eight credits. Come on. There's no agenda. There's agendas in here. They are on game point. Oh, they just made us stronger. Yes. Yes. That's good. <laughs> they pay three. They pay, oh, four. 
not the worst. I wonder, oh, thank you. Thank the Lord, okay. Indeed, right, they're just gonna build turning wheel tokens. That's the only issue. At least they can only run through this once. Having money would be cool. Highlander might be a fun way to play with old cards. I think so. I think if you did Highlander with the whole card pool, it might be fun. Also, you don't lose one. Oh, we do right, we don't lose one. Super cool, okay, that's the issue, right? <laughs> yeah, that's very cool, yeah. yeah. How busted could it be if you were only allowed one Jackson? Uh, it'd be annoying. That's the problem though with high variance, those things, it's like, oh, you found your one copy of, uh, like I feel like, a, uh, that's fine, okay, a good game. That was terrible, oh my God, that was such a rough draw. We also goofed up the hostel, like no tomorrow. We weren't even consider what we were doing. Um, hey, you too. Cool deck. Um, yeah, like I feel like a lot of that format might be around busted things if you play with the whole card pool. Like I'm gonna play one copy of uh, whatever that like career fair, but the other side of it, where you can find a sysop, so you can like jam. Uh, is she a sysop? Uh, Caprice. Like stuff like that. Aaron, bring back three Astro. All right, Aaron. By the way, I have your play mat. Are you in Montreal anytime soon, or what do you want to do about that? But yeah, I don't know. I feel like it might be frustrating, but also maybe it's just wacky fun. I don't know. Start with one copy of Yago. Yeah, Yago's a good start. Hey, GG, that was terrible. Yeah, that was really bad. That was, that was terrible. Well, that's no good. We can do better than that. Old Hollywood Grid finally has a meta. Oh my god, Old Hollywood Grid has a meta. I feel like on Runner, you just always pick, uh, you would always pick Professor, right? Is there any reason not to pick Professor? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe Professor is top tier in the Highlander meta. Not me saying that. That's what you said. Yeah, okay. Fine, fine. Yeah, Wu is also really good. You're right. Wu is actually really good. Hold Holy Good is awesome in draft. Old Holy Good is probably not the worst in standard. Yeah, that's probably better. Also, did Yannick ever get back about Afshar? No, I haven't heard from Yannick at all. You can pay for mailing fees. Okay, yo, Aaron, uh, hit me up on any of the things that you know me on with your address. I'll let you know what it looks like. I, it's just like right over there. If you want me to show you it, I can. you can look at it. Aaron left the playmat in Montreal, unfortunately. GG, that was terrible. I don't think that's a contradiction. All right, we're gonna get Apocalypse. Not on my watch is what we're gonna say. So this opening hand, we could we can do worse than this. We can worse, do worse than this. Uh, we could keep this. We can draw building blocks for OAI for Orion. That'd be hot. We have two ice for essentials, and we could hostile out the next turn. I think we'll keep this. I think we're gonna get uh, apocalypsed. Old Hollywood and DRM could see some play. Oh yeah, it's cool too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so it's better to not install this uh, on the basis that we could draw an OAI uh, building blocks. So we're just gonna do one of those right there. One of those right there. This card's actually good on the face check because there's a chance of trash and apocalypse. Oh, born. Also, best of luck. Have fun. DJ Coca Cola. Up to some nonsense. For me not to play the same Val list I've played for three years. Oh, no way. I still haven't seen anyone play the new HB agenda, which I think is a nutty agenda. All right, pretty good opening. Never seen that before. I'm just gonna score this. Uh, they have turntable a lot of times, so getting the hostile scored, even if it gets you to like that awkward five points or the awkward two points, is worth it. Actually, too bad pup can go far away, but whatever. I think you can do some discussing too with RP and DRM. Yeah. Oh, Paperclip's a restricted card, that's a big deal. Uh, they have it too, which means that OAI Orion is at least expensive, but doable. Uh, we can consulting building blocks Orion, so we're spending about a seven and two clicks to get eight. Not convinced I love that. Actually, no, we could do that, and then we can get this on. No, because they can trash it. They know they can trash it. I don't want to get a rest. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's at least better. So double Orion doesn't seem that useful. It's unique after all. Mega Pre, yeah, I'm running a sports metal. I like it. It looks really good. And that's a big thing is like if the meta switches away from Shaper for some reason, if Anarch gets more popular. Oh, two Black Amakua, a Black Orchestra and an MK Ultra. They just played Easy Mark. 
Wow. Um, Double Amaku, though, is a big deal again. We're pretty okay against it. They have all their breakers now, so the Overcity Eye is worse than the building blocks. At least they have to spend a fair bit of money breaking this with uh, with either Orchestra or MK Ultra. There's Find the Truth. So we need to watch out for Archives because they're going to rebirth into um, Omar, and then Find the Truth is really strong. This deck won Canadian Nats, this sort of deck. So we want Ice for Archives. Luckily, we do have it. Even just resing this up front is not the worst. They know we have a Rashida. Let's draw once. Uh, Surveyor for Remote is mediocre. They have two bad pub. I think Surveyor and Archives is probably good enough. They're going to Omar, so this Archives is actually worth protecting. Uh, I don't want to put this in a remote. Man, these opening hands can be really clumsy. When they're bad, they're bad. But I think maybe we didn't have to ice all centrals. I think we're just too worried about Apocalypse to not do that. I don't think we get Apocalypse on turn one. Even if we do, it's not that bad. I feel like Master Out could be good, but yeah. It's the only time, I've, third time I've seen the inject easy mark. Some decks do it worse than others. Freedom does it a fair bit, unfortunately. Data suckers and Yusuf's and all. The second one gets some Ice Carver, which is pretty sweet. Hacktivist and Paragon. So this is just good stuff. This is like old Desperado Val. APOC with FTT seems less likely. There's no way they're in APOC, but like turn one. That's what the, the, the worry was. I think we'll just push for this to see if we get them to go for it. Uh, there's a chance they play Hacktivist, which actually would be pretty annoying. So I think we're going to pre-res it. At least they know what they're up against. Yeah, there's no way they're on APOC. You don't APOC this. The cool thing is, so they know we have this too. So there's no point, point pre-resing it. Well, there's no point not pre-resing it maybe. The thing is like, we're running five threes. I think you can assume that in Blue Sun. Scared to have the second? Wait, they th oh, they threw it out. Oh. They tossed it. Whoops. There's the Ice Carver. All right, they have 20 credits. We'll go ahead and res this. They can't really capitalize the turn after. So it's seven strength. It only has two subroutines. One of them doesn't really matter. <laughs> Maybe they do have the second. And they're going to see the top of R&D too. So that's the problem is if it's an agenda, we actually can't res the mouseless. So we're one credit short. At least this is still pretty expensive. This is six with a bad pub. And then another one to trash it. Strange. So apparently I only got a prompt for one of their breakers, even though all three fire off of this. All right, we can resolve a subroutine, another piece of ice. Hell yeah. So now running this is going to be consistently five credits with bad pub. So uh, daily quests. Oh, yeah, actually, no, it's even a bit better. Ice cover with paper clips good. So two bad pub, six to break this, so they pay four. So it's five to trash this. They probably do. So we just want another piece of ice on here. Ooh, Paragon as well. And they see the top of R&D. So it's not even. It's like three credits to run this thing. <laughs> if we have this in there, it's kind of bad. And sure, gamble. Okay. Please get us a better draw. That's actually getting to be a good draw. But we just need to click for credits here more than anything because we can't raise any essentials. And... I think two Amakua out. It's unlikely they're on clone chip. They also know we have the surveyor. We have to remember that the find the truth. They can see every time they see uh, they do a top deck run. They run. They see their top deck. Did I did I say that right? Okay, we're going in. We'll res the mouseless. They're gonna see the top of R&D anyways. This has some mean subs. This is pretty expensive for them to deal with. Just kidding. It's three credits. Yeah, it's hard to read this. Oh, it makes it really easy for us to read it. Never mind. Well done, JNet. Ice Carver doing work. Why not bounce Orion? Uh, because we would have jammed into it. It's kind of just slow. Like you're spending a click reinstalling it, and all we want to do is click for credits. Like we're not going to do anything with the mobility of this card. We're not going to over AI it. In theory, if we top deck a building blocks, which is only two and thirty-five, yeah, you're right. Bouncing this is good, but like we're in no rush. Like we need four credits next turn. This is why I dislike Hostile and Blue Sun. Why is that? Why is that why you dislike Hostile and Blue Sun? Oh, fuck, because they break this for one credit. They also know we have Punitive. Coming for Nationals, afraid not. It's pretty far away. It's like kind of really expensive to get over to Edmonton. Canada's way big. We got to throw something out. 
I know. It's Edmonton. <laughs> not much to do there. Yeah. No, not the most. Blue Sun does the Grandy Glacier deck and Bad Pup really cuts into it. It does. At least it's going to Montreal there. Shit to, shit to see. That's true. Got a you cool mall. Don't sell yourself short. Um, okay. We could jam this and not res it. At least it forces them to do something. They probably think it's Rashid and they have to pay full to trash it. Are you coming to US Nats? Uh the Philly one? Seems more likely. We're talking about it more. West Edmonton Mall doesn't make up for it. It does! Holy shit, it does. I don't even have that. I don't, I'm not even from Edmonton. So I don't have that. Um, I was born in Edmonton. I have like really good uh, memories of like just watching marble machines. I'd be a kid. I'd stand there. They have these like giant marble machines. When you're a kid, everything's giant. I think they were still pretty big, like marble machines. And you just watched a marble go through like the, the track. I think it's called like a kinetic. Really? I don't know. Uh, kinetic sculpture. My God. Spend hours, just spend hours. So cool. I mean, the SF one. Oh no, when is the SF Nats? I thought America, North American Nats was like US Nats was uh, Gen Con, or is that North American? I don't know. There's US Nats. No, I'm not coming to SF. That's for sure. That's really, really far. All right. So if we rest this, it's really bad for us. They break it for almost no money. They break it for one credit. First week in November? Wow, really? I had no idea. What's up? Wait. Good day. Did I forget it on the last one? I think we might have forgot it on the last one. Did we forget the credit? Oh, no, we didn't. They got a CityWorks project. Okay. So I think if they don't have an iPad worse in hand, they die. Thinking, what's the math here? Does he have double punitive? If they have one iPad worse, it's all for nothing. I think we still have to go all in on it. I just don't know if the math is possible. Um, so we need to do trace uh, 12. So we have to spend seven. So we have to spend 10 on each of them. So we can't do it. We just can't do it. Oh no, wait, we can do punitive. You trace plus two. Yeah, yeah. So we pay three for five. So we still have to space seven. So seven plus three is 10 and we have to do it twice. Uh, we can archive for the same punitive so we don't have to spend more on it. No, we can't do it. You just need four more than them. Yeah, but we have to land it twice. Like a single punitive doesn't kill them. No good. I'm not fucking this up, right? We'd have to hit 10 each time. We're literally some credit short. Three. Fuck. Punitive neural, oh, shit. Consulting for neural. You do consulting first. You do neural punitive. You play around iPad worse. <laughs> One X neural. O2 shortage. Double punitive plus hedge. Yeah, we need a hedge. We don't have it. We're just going to not play it. So this is why bouncing that was bad. We should have done the math before for sure. You gotta do that when you're not even playing a neural uh, punitive deck. You gotta do that. So you, they think about it. You do an HB, like how many cards in hand, how many credits? Okay, that's fine. Fire all on mouseless. Thanks for the credit. <laughs> We're seeing the top card of the deck. It's really important because now they know when to run there for one credit. Paragon fires as well. This is a free run. I was really excited about this deck like yesterday when it was undefeated. That surveyor is still so sad to break. Yeah, it's still three credits, right? At least it looks better. I think they know we have the surveyor too. Oh, they drew mining accident. 
I feel like we have to fight the mining accident. At least they play mining accident. They're not contesting this. Oh, they're storm hacking. Storm hacking it. Uh, so if we res this, we can't. Uh, we're just not gonna res any of this shit. So they waste all their money. Because if we res this, we can't play IPO or whatever. So they gain two credits, and we eat a stim hack. Feels okay. And stim hack trash is stim hack. That happens more than you think. As much as damn, I am good. Um, <laughs> not the most unworth. And yeah, they have paperclip, which is the good counter to all this shit. They know we have this. Uh, we could, in theory, shuffle our. No. Ooh, we do have it. And they're on two cards. Oh, but they have a lot of money. How'd they get so much money? I guess a little preemptive. Oh, this is miserable. Uh, too bad pub. Paperclip. Paragon. They're good at running. They just drew double mining accident. We used to have money. Honestly, it might have been better just to archive memories in the the thing into the in the in, the, in there. CV building blocks then install SSL. It's not particularly that good. Might not have been the worst, honestly. I still think they have more money than us. Oh, they're not even playing the mining accent, which is wild. I think we're never gonna punitive them. I think they're just a whole live had worse and keep at three cards. So I think they, they got their one copy of City Works. So I don't think we can do it. You might be right, actually. That play sounded pretty good. And Drones is terrible. Drones is so bad. We just need another ice on here. We have like 17 ice in this deck. I don't feel like we're being unlucky, though. This gets us nothing. Nah, it's not true. Oh boy. Oh, we got this. We gotta score the hostile. We'll score another hostile. We're good at scoring hostile. They break this with bad publicity uh, for five credits. Seems good. But then the mouseless is the real attack. See, we just need two ice on every server. Like, ooh, that's a problem. Um, like this thing, uh, bad pub goes a lot less far when you have, ooh, do one net damage. Don't mind if I do. All right, they guess a number here, RNG key. They gotta play a little game. Find the truth, top card R&D, they know what it is. Paragon, gain one credit, look at the top of their deck. They're looking at everyone's deck. For what it's worth, we know everything they draw. They guessed five, they hit the SDS. A. I have an idea that in this deck, if you don't mulligan for building blocks or over city in the early game, <laughs> it's hard to win. Because that's all your money. So they trash their cheapest breaker. Because they can reinstall it for literally free. Uh, the double punitive plan it looks even more unlikely. Because each punitive we have to sink 12 credits in. So we need... 30 credits, we can get all the way up to 27. So three credits short again. If they install a card, their numbers are even better. There's no way we can get up to money unless we perfectly top deck one of our hedge funds. If we draw a hedge fund and they don't click for a credit, we might be able to kill them, but I'm assuming there's two I've had worse in their hand. What do you mean they just win? There's 17, okay. I'm just gonna balance this though. Oh. Oh. I think we're a credit short. I think we're one credit short. Thank you. I think we're a credit short. If they took the net damage. If they took the net damage. I'm just gonna do it because I don't think we win. I didn't do the math. It was difficult. We're credit short. We're a fucking credit short! Fuck. 
I knew it. We should have done the math. We can make them spend all their money. That's a start. Fuck! <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, we probably lose here to single axis. Find the truth. Top card of R&D. We have no money, so like if they run R&D, they can steal it. Paragon, that's another credit. Oh, okay. We got it too. Fuck! This is the argument why you play SSL over this. I think results oriented thinking is really important. And so uh we're gonna we're gonna make sure that, that one hostile was clutch. Like the bad pub was bad. Ah a red level clearance, yeah, right? Credit. Click subliminal messaging, yeah. Yeah, damn it. Damn it. Did we fuck up an Orion band something? Oh, Jesus. Fuck. I miss subliminal messaging. That's a really fun card. To be have most Valor on APOC, and why wouldn't they be? Yeah, exactly. Which is why I uh, ace centrals instead of pushing. It's too scary. Yeah, also, also, turntable. Fuck that shit. We have to score the hostile anyway. Like, there's no way we don't score the hostile. At least, like, even turn one or turn two, score the hostile, you're better against mining accident. Pergon comes out of nowhere, yeah. Turn table, I think, is the console in Anarch right now, unless they're playing, like, Max and they want to do a... Uh, the one where you throw shit away. I don't even know the name. One credit! All right, so it's only SSL, right? <laughs> That's it for me. Uh, that was a pretty fun stream. Some of it was kind of miserable, but hey, you lose now in our games. We won a GNK yesterday. We're we're decorated. So it's fine. Sorry about the one credit. Oh, that was funny. It was funny. Cheers. Um, Patrick, yeah, that's the one. Um, cool. That's largely it here. We'll be back next week, of course. Uh, again, new most wanted list. Check that shit out. There's a tournament this weekend. I don't know if it's too late to sign up, but maybe do it. It seems really cool. It's the same meta with these cards uh, and the new most wanted list. So that's the first big organized tournament, I think, with this stuff in, unless there's like regionals. There are people playing regionals this weekend. Uh, we're still gonna rotate it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even be mad. Yeah, right. Hey, good game, DJ. Uh, but yeah, that's largely it for us. We'll be back next week for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Thursdays are good. Uh, thanks, shout outs to all those in chat, all the people we played games with. Thanks for all the games. Uh, if you're watching the VOD also, look at you. Uh, and uh, we'll be back in a week. That's all I got to say. Good luck with your tournaments. Enjoy the new most one list. It's pretty cool. Ciao. Uh, clock on site. Sorry, will you participate in the tournament? No, but I might be participating in a tournament in a different way. I don't know. We'll find out. It's still in talks. Bye.